So hey guys. This is your favorite the fanfic club. So in this video. We will see what if Naruto awakens extremely powerful multiple bloodline. Summary says. Neglected by parent for his Jinchuriki's siblings and scorned by the village, he found himself in Kiri. Trained by the best, he will show the world what he capable of. Extremely powerful multiple bloodline Naruto. But before we start, remember to subscribe and like this video. Now let's start. Several blurs passed quickly through the lush forest, heading toward certain direction at extreme speed. There were several people, around ten or so following the two leading members, one of whom had red hair and another with blonde. The two suddenly stopped their track as they looked at the sight in front of them. The following groups stopped behind their leaders, they wore a standard Kirigakir flak or slate gray in color and pocket less. The most notable features of these flak jackets are the extended shoulder guards and lower extensions on either side. This flak jacket was fastened from the sides by straps. They come with a neck guard and have elongated padding over the shoulders with their village symbol on both padding. They also wore an ambu style pant with two hip pouch and two shuriken holster. Combined with sandals, masks with thin slitted eyehole and their village symbol on the forehead, indicated that they were hunter nin, and elite ambu branches of Kirigakir specialized in track down and eliminate missing nin. They stopped their track for a moment and stood behind the figures before them. The two figures before the groups looked at the distance, from their sight, out of the forest there was a river and an incomplete bridge which if finished will connected the land they currently reside and another side of the river. But that was not what interested them, indeed it wasn't the bridge but it was what was there near the bridge. The misty environment concealed the properly view of the bridge but the slight shift in air current indicated that there was a battle going on in the said bridge. The first figure was a boy around 14 years old. He had blood red hair and spiky long hair, Monado's hairstyle, and fairy skin body. He had jaw length bangs framing either side of his face. His eye was icy ocean blue, which indicated power and calmness. Look at my profile for the figures. He wore a traditional light blue Yuminori hakama adorned with a small emblem of three bubbles on the back with orange sash, like Utakata's kimono in design and color scheme, light blue tabi and blue sandals, and teku with summoning seals. Imagine Naruto with combination of Assassin Fate Stay Night uniform and Utakata's kimono color scheme. In it, he carries a bamboo jug filled with a soap solution, pure white sheathed katana, look at blue exorcist Kurakara sword, and a pipe, similar to Utakata's bubble blower but with slight blossoming yellow flower in place where the bubble is released. In addition, he wore a short sleeved long white haori over his normal attire, decorated by blue waves like motifs on the edges. The uzu like swirl symbol were located at the central back with six jade green pointy curved magatama surrounding it. His Kirigakure forehead protector with bright blue bandana was placed securely on his forehead. If you could saw his face, it was at first appeared to be unreadable but if you look closely you would spot a small smile on his lip. The second figures was a woman in her early twentieth, she had long, straight, blonde, hair bound with taut bandages and dark eyes. She wore a short sleeved black and purple blouse and black pants, both of which had a design similar to clouds on them, purple fingerless gloves and a chain of blue beads wound around her left hand. She had D breast size. She also wore the standard Kumo forehead protector, sandals and kanai holster which was strapped to her right thigh. She also wore bandages around her arms and legs as well as a red belt around her waist. Her name was Yugito Ni, the elite Jonin and Jinchurikis of Nibi of Kumogakure. The Hunter Nin squad member with red flaming pattern on the left side of the mask looked toward the direction where the two leading figures looked at. He wore a standard uniform of Hunter Nin but with some differences his flak jacket was blue instead of grey like his comrades. He had a spiky dark blue hair and a blue katana strapped on his back. He noticed the small smile on the red hair figures before him and decided to ask him something, Taicho, leader, so our targets are here? The male figure without looked back at the members, widens his smile a bit and replied calmly to his comrades, yes, it is them. Rusui. Shall we proceed with our mission as protocols? Asked the newly named Rusui professionally. The figures replied gently, let's strict to the protocol for now, if they don't respond to our proposition then we have no choice but to retrieve them by force although Mizukage sama specifically requests us not to damage them so much, said the figure in calm yet serious tone. What about the others Taicho? What should we do about them as they might thwart our objectives? Asked another Hunter Nin member, this time a black hair female in soft voice. 
The beautiful blonde hair female figure replied for him in soft but commanding tone, leave them be. We can use our authority to force them to step away from our mission. As strong as they are, they don't want to mess with the hidden village like us. It would do more harm than good to them. Isn't it my cute little Kitsune? She ended the conversation with slight teasing tone which obviously direct toward the red hair figure. It was super effective as the red hair young man tried so hard to stop the blushing expression from showing in his face, he struggled a bit but finally succeed in keeping his professional face. The blonde hair female couldn't help but giggle at her companion's misfortune. R. Right. Let's start the mission, shall we? asked the red head in commanding tone. Yes, sir. The hunter squad shouted in unison before blurred out from sight, leaving the two figures at the same spot as before. The blonde woman slowly made her way toward the red hair young man. As soon as she got close to his body, she put her right hand on his shoulder consolingly as the red hair man relaxed. Are you all right, dear? asked Yugito in worrying tone as she didn't like how he reacted right now. I'm fine, Haim, my love, it is going to be quite a reunion. After all these years, I got to meet them again, he paused as his mood started to drop. His blonde lover wasn't fond of this atmosphere one bit as it wasn't fit his personality, it was an aura of depression just like how she and several others used to be before she met him. She decided to cheer him up by slightly slapping his chest playfully, come on, let's move, everything is going to be fine. I promised, said Yugito with a smile, hoped that he would smile which he did. Hi, said Naruto softly with genuine smile on his face before both of them turned toward the bridge and disappeared in whirl of water, fire. On the bridge at the same time this was their first mission outside the village, and now they already in a difficult situation. A week prior, Kashina and Kakashi along which their team received a C-rank mission to escorted the bridge builder Tazuna back to his homeland which was Nami no Kuni, land of wave, and protected him until he completed the bridge. It was supposed to be an easy mission but clearly it wasn't. Just a few distances outside the village, their team was attacked by two shinobi, it was not so difficult as Menma, I don't own his characters, and Kasumi, I don't own her, two out of three children Kashina had were able to effortlessly dealt with them. They were demon brothers, Oni Kyodai, low rank Chunin level missing Nin of Kirigakure. A low rank but still missing Nin, it appeared that Tazuna lied about the mission's rank because they didn't have enough money to pay for higher rank mission as it should be. They decided to help him and travel for a while before they met a powerful foe, Zabuza Momochi, Kirigakure no Kijin. Demon of the Hidden Mist. The wielder Kabikirabocho, Executioner Blade, of the Seven Ninja Swordsmen of the Mist. Rather than dealt with Zabuza herself, she decided to let Kakashi dealt with him but he was badly beaten. Before she could step in, thanks to the flawless combination attack of Kasumi and Mema, they were able to wound Zabuza, freeing Kakashi from his captive and later defeated him. He was apparently died and the Hunter Enin of Kirigakure took his body away. They rested for a week and trained very hard to become stronger although Kasumi refused to practice teamwork with Menma or her so, she practiced by herself. She was upset by this as well as Menma but they could do nothing because she would ignore them and left. This started seven years ago when her eldest son as well as Menma and Kasumi's older brother disappeared from the village. They tried so hard to find him with no avail, apparently he was scared out of the village by the village, very own, Shinobi. Well everyone might want to know why he was chased away by his own people, the answer was very simple, and he was the so-called demon association and embarrassment of Hokage's family. He was the eldest child of Namikaze's family yet he didn't inherit special chakra like his younger siblings. For years since twins were born, he was neglected by his family for his younger siblings as they were Jinchurikis of Kayubi no Kitsune, the powerful demon which attacked and laid waste to Konoha 13 years ago. The twin had the beast sealed within them so, Minato and Kashina thought they need more attention which was plain stupid. Poor Naruto was left behind by everyone, even his own parent. They were some people that cared and helped him during his hard time, Kakashi, Gai, Aruka, Kurenai, Yugo, Hayate, Hana, Anko, Itachi, Makoto, Hiruzen, Shizune and his godmother Tsunade. He was very happy that at least someone cared for him but he couldn't help but felt hollow inside. He was of course tried so hard to prove himself and gained their attention, he was a natural genius even more so than his siblings but still they couldn't see it. His sister Kasumi was close to him though, as even though she had full attention from her parent but it wasn't love. 
They seemed to favor Menma more than her because he posed Yang which was chakra while she posed Yin which was the soul. She found a comfort in her brother Naruto because he would help her without hesitation, Mema was by any word, mean, to her. He was arrogant, a bit selfish and uncaring toward her as well as tends to make fun of her skill as even though she hate to admit it, he was better than her in ninjutsu and taijutsu as well as stamina. He would try to make fun of her brother Naruto too but they were tied in skill so, after a few time he would shut up. Naruto learned everting by himself and his family instead of support it, instead scold him harshly and grounded him. The reason, well they didn't see any reason for Naruto to be stronger than his siblings, they thought that Menma might be upset if Naruto was better than him so, they purposely barred Naruto from gaining access to their clan scrolls while let Menma did so as he pleased. They didn't know that it would drift their family apart. Naruto was the polite man, yet he was portrayed to be a troublemaker since any pranked or troubled done by either Menma or everyone was blamed at him. The Namikaze's family didn't bother to investigate and grounded him even with his pleas that he was innocent but they didn't. T saw it. He was scold, beat into the ground, and broke his spirit in process. Only few people, his friends, his godmother, Hiruzen and his sister believed in him and tried to help which he appreciated that very much but it was in vain. The villagers would treated him like a scum, they also beat him a couple of times as he was protective of Kasumi so to them he was demon's lover. After a series of this happened over and over again, he fed up and chased away as the Junin squads chased him. That day, the Namikaze family learned the whole truth that Naruto was innocent all along and their perfect, Menma was a little devil incarnated. They, include Menma, felt their heart shattered and decided to make amend for him, Menma felt guilty after a vicious scold from his parent. After they learned that their son, disappears, and their shinobi had a hand in it, they were so upset that the people who looked up to them would have a heart to harm their children. Their heart even swelled further as they learned the truth of their son, sibling treatment at the villager's hand, they hurt him to get back on Kasumi. To say they were furious was understatement, they punished everyone whom had a hand in Naruto's suffering and imprisoned them. Naruto's friends and precious people were furious at this and almost end all of their ties to Namikaze's family, except Kasumi as she was there for him and didn't do anything wrong. Kakashi almost renounced his bond with Minato, Tsunade almost cut her tie with the family etc. Kasumi took the new hardest and that hurt the family very hard. She called them a monster, blamed them for, her, brother's suffering. She even smiled sarcastically and accused them of being satisfied of, her, Oni-chan's suffering and with him being out of the village, Kashina snapped and slapped her but Kasumi shocked everyone by used Tengoku no Kachu, heavenly armor technique, which almost broke her wrist in process. She passed her shocked family to her brother Naruto's room without spare a glance and said that she hated them. Before they could spoke to her, she locked the room using a special seal which Naruto taught to her and started to cry. After she recovered, she managed to found a message her brother left for her as well as present which were a lot of jutsu scrolls, some of which she found to be similar to those their family had, copy of forbidden scrolls and some of them she had no idea about cool weaponry and beautiful necklaces with Chinese dragon and phoenix pendants made of ocean blue crystal. It also seemed to react to her chakra and she felt much stronger than before but that was for another time. From there on, she started to ignore her family and spend time inside her brother's room looking for more cool stuffs. She also trained by herself when her family were busy, she grown to be very powerful for her age, even beat the Junin into blood pulps when he was about to rape her. She was renowned as the second coming of Red Death, the nickname she took proudly. Menma and Kasumi eventually graduated with top rank of the academy, they had been put into a team consisted of herself Kashina, Kakashi as Junin Sensei, Kasumi, Menma, the brooder Sasuke and that fangirl Sakura. She thought about Sasuke with a frown, after Itachi murdered his entire family excluding himself, Makoto and his younger sister Hitomi. He had become more and more distant to everyone than he already was, he became more and more hateful toward her family for some reason, partly because of his jealousy toward Menma and Kasumi who were better than him, in Kasumi's case much better. He believed that his remaining family's members and women were weak and unfit to lead the clan. He also demanded Kasumi to be one of his wife, said that she should be honored that he choose her to restart the oh so, great, Uchiha clan. Needless to say, she beat him badly and it increased as he badmouthed Naruto in front of her, that day the village almost lost one of the last, loyal, Uchiha. But that still wasn't stopped him from trying. Back in the present on the bridge in the land of Wave. So here she was, 
locking her twin red-handled katana with her opponent. He was a man with a silver-white hair with shark-like teeth which shone clearly while he was smiling. Her crimson-red hair swirl in the wind as she raised her chakra level before eventually overpowered her opponent. Before she could cut him into half, he skillfully moved out of the way. She stared at each other for a moment because he gave her a mischievous smile and said cheerfully. You were as good as they said Kashina Uzumaki, the Red Death, said the white-haired man, it was always my dream to fight against such a powerful Kenjusu user like you. You know, I'm your great fan. But that doesn't mean that I would give up. I would prove myself by fighting you and if I can, win. Kashina gritted her teeth, she had to admit that although she wasn't at her full strength. In fact she wasn't using even half of her power but the boy, no young man in front of her wasn't weak. In fact, he was very powerful for his ages. Her opponent was the second coming of Demon of Kiri, Manjetsu Hazuka, one of the fabled seven ninja swordsmen of the mist. He wielded one of the seven blades, Kiba, the sword that said to be the sharpest sword ever made. Her train of thought stopped when she heard an explosion from within the mist on the other side of the bridge. She knew that Kakashi could handle himself fine while fighting against Zabuza. She knew that Menma and Kasumi were strong too but she couldn't help but worried for them, she could care less about Sasuke or Sakura as personally she didn't thought much about them. As she thought of her twin children, her thought later shifted to her red hair eldest child who she wanted to meet him again and never let him go before banished those thought and focused on the task at hand. Her foe, as if he could read her mind chuckled a bit, gaining her attention. Worried about your children isn't it? Kashina raised eyebrows from this but otherwise professional face still on, well, you should be. My younger brother, even when he was young, his prowess wasn't thing to be underestimated. In fact, he could best several junins without much a scratch. He was even stronger than me at his ages. He and Haku were very powerful. That pink-haired banshee and so-called Uchiha don't stand a chance, your children might entertain them a bit before. He didn't manage to finish his sentence as he had to dodge a furious sword dance from Kashina. Due to his unnatural flexibility, reflex and experience, he managed to dodge all of her attack albeit barely. He decided to taunt her a bit so, sorry, I didn't mean that he dodged a long arc of chakra strike, it isn't personal, just business, she ignored him and continues to slash at him in a series of kenjutsu dance. After some time, Manjetsu got bored of dodging so, he charged up his Kiba blade with lightning chakra and slashed at her in respond. If you see it from outside, you could see Siri's electrical charges appeared randomly throughout the misty plain. Meanwhile, Kakashi was struggling to hold his own against Zabuza as it appeared that his kanais in both of his hand combined with his own strength wasn't enough to hold his own against Zabuza's Kabikirabocho and his monstrous strength. They clashed their respective weapon together. Kakashi was clearly on the losing side as physical strength wasn't his strongest attribute. What is the matter? A. Sharingan no Kakashi. Tired already. Taunted Zabuza as he put some more force in his weapon, forced Kakashi to quickly step out of the way to prevent himself from getting cleaved into half. But by doing so, he got kicked to the sideline of the bridge although he was able to skillfully block it but he could still felt the effect of the kick on his body, a testament to Zabuza's strength as one of the swordsmen. Before they could clash again, there was an explosion again. This time bigger than before, the ice dome was broken and the figure was sent flying away to Zabuza's direction. This figure wore a broken Hunter Nin mask and slightly worn out Hunter Nin uniform. His mask was falling out and broke away completely as he stood up beside Zabuza on his left side. Sorry, Zabuza sama, I was beaten, said the figure in apologize. Zabuza just shrugged uncaringly, indicated that he wasn't really care. It doesn't matter, Haku, those brats are strong. As I predicted, they should be too much for you, especially that red hair girl, said Zabuza analytically. The fake hunter Nin known as Haku nodded in acceptance. The puddle of water flew quickly to the right side of Zabuza who didn't bother to react. It formed into a man-like figure before it became the individuals. He put his hand on his hip as they stared at the distance in the mist. The person was a young man of average height, straight white hair with a light blue tint to it in the anime, purple eyes, and had pointed teeth, one of which sticks out even with his mouth as closed. He wore a purple, sleeveless shirt with blue pants, sandals and a belt around his waist with water bottles attached to it. He looked very much alike Manjetsu only younger by few years. He gave out a playful grin as two blurs came out of the misty plain and stood before them along with Kakashi. Yeah, you were right. The Uchiha brat Sasuke was quite weak. 
He couldn't last five minutes against me despite his boastful attitude. Haku finished him first, he took a glance at the defeat, full of Senban body of fallen Sasuke behind his foes. He snorted before glanced at the blonde boy full of bruised on his body beside equally worn out Kakashi, that Menma guy was okay but none of his attack worked on me and lastly, he took a quick look at the slightly worn out red hair girl beside her brother and grinned widely the red hair girl is the true package. She beat Haku by herself and even assisted her brother to stand against me, but too bad she couldn't beat me as she has to protect her brother. Basically he slows her down, Menma looked down slightly at this before looked up and glared at Haku who looked other way. Why, Haku? Asked Menma in confusion. Because he is my precious people, replied Haku, my meaning of existence is given by him. He saves me from despair, then he proceeded to told them about his past, how he killed his father in self-defense and his life before he met Zabuza and traveled with him since then. Kakashi and Menma seemed to draw to the story and almost in tear while Kasumi raised her eyebrows as she suspected that he knew more than he let on. Suddenly a cane knock voice can be heard, the mist started to fade away and the atmosphere became clearer but still a bit misty. There on the opposite side of the bridge, there was a short man in business suit with glass stood in front of the group of strong men, all dressed like a thugs with different kind of weapons on their arm or back. There were over 200 of them. My my, how pathetic. The so-called demon of the hidden mist can't get his job done, said Gato. Gato, growled Tizuna in low tone. Gato ordered his henchmen, killed all of them. But leave the girls and women alive for entertainment, he finished as all of them smirked evilly and about to charge at the tired group of shinobi but the voice from everywhere interrupted them, no you won't, we wouldn't allow you. Gato was shocked as he has no idea where the voice came from so, he spoke in panic along with his men, who are you? Show yourself. The voice replied calmly, as you wish, you won't leave here alive anyway, Gato growled at this but keep silence. Several swirl of water, mist appeared on the bridge from behind Gato and his group. As the mist clear out, revealing five hunter nin. All of them took out their weapon, Kanai and Katana. Every shinobis from both side, Zabuza and Konoha, stayed alert as they didn't know what the hunter nin really after. Well, well hunter nin of Kirigakir. What a day. What do you want by coming here? Asked Gato professionally but inside he was heavily sweating dropping, he knew that crossing this group of shinobi wasn't good for his help. The last thing he wanted was the professional assassins of extreme caliber after his head. The leading hunter nin in blue uniform replied in calm but professional tone, cut the crap. Gato, chairman of Gatu Shipping Companies, we have received a report from Nami no Kuni Daimyo to our nation that your company technically took over the country and literally enslaved citizens and committed countless acts of cruelty toward them. Our order is to, ask, you to kindly remove your company and influence out of this country. If you do so, we will let you remain in business with serious fine. However, if you refuse to comply then we are authorized to use force to subdue or execute you, he received an insane laughter from the dwarf man. Ha ha ha. Do you think that you will be able to kill me? There are only five of you while there are plenty of my men. What a joke. All I have to do is kill you all and Kirigakir will never get a report. All right boys, he pointed his finger at the group of still calm hunter Nin, kill them all. Those who killed them and those annoying ninja will receive double reward. He received a chorus of yell in satisfaction from those thugs. They draw out their respective weapon and charged at them. The Konoha shinobi including Zabaza's groups began to worry a bit because the hunter Nin seemed to froze in place. As the groups moved close in and about ONL. In that instant, the loud voice was heard throughout the bridge. Sweden. Homatsu no jutsu, water release. Bubble jutsu, at the end of the word. The mist condensed into droplets and those droplets combined and formed a series of bubbles started to form in the surrounding area all direction, surrounding the thugs. They didn't slow down at all, thinking that the weak bubbles couldn't possibly do a thing to them. How wrong they were. Suddenly the groups of bubbles were directed toward them. The second that the bubbles hit them, boom, the massive explosion occurred instantly. The explosion lasted for a few moments before it dissolved, leaving various body parts, crushed organs and pool of bloods and bloodied weapons on the place where the thugs used to be. The girls looked sick, even the guys, Sasuke recovered when the hunter Nin arrived, looked in disgust. Gato was scared shitless, before he could ran away a hunter Nin suddenly appeared behind him. Before the man could say anything he heard a click sound as the hunter Nin unsheathed her katana, 
His head had been cut off by extremely fast clean cut. His head fell off as so his body into the water below the bridge as the said shinobi resheathed her katana. She turned to face her squads and nodded before turned to face the group of shinobi before her. The said group tensed when the whole squads marched slowly toward them but eased as they stopped at the middle distance between them. All clear Taicho, you can come out now, reported the leading hunter Enon in monotone to his leader who was yet to show him, herself. What? Isn't he the leader? Thought pretty much everyone on the bridge as they thought that the one with blue uniform was the leader. The uniform was different, well except for two people who thought of something else. The chakra signature in the strange jutsu that killed those thugs doesn't match any of the hunter nin of the bridge so, the only logical reason is that there is someone else that on their side are working with them. The question is who and is he or she the Taicho they are talking about. The chakra signature is familiar to me though but I can't remember who or where I came across with, thought Kashina and Kakashi. Suddenly a series of water fire swirl appeared on the bridge, the group tensed at this before relaxed as the new groups appeared beside the five original hunter nins. The charming voice which they predicted that it was from young man came up as the leading hunter nin stood there unmoving. Nice one Rusui. As expected from you, spoke the figure cheerfully as he walked up from behind and stood beside him. He was the red hair young man, light he wore blue Yuminori hakama adorned with a small emblem of three bubbles on the back with orange sash, like Yudakata's kimono in design and color scheme, light blue tabi and blue sandals, and teku with summoning seals, imagine Naruto with combination of assassin fate stay night uniform and Yudakata's kimono color scheme. In it, he carries a bamboo jug filled with a soap solution, pure white sheathed katana, look at blue exorcist Kurakara sword, and a pipe, similar to Yutakata's bubble blower but with slight blossoming yellow flower in place where the bubble is released, in addition, he wore a short sleeved long white haori over his normal attire, decorated by blue waves like motifs on the edges, the uzu like swirl symbol were located at the central back with six jade green pointy curved magatama surrounding it. His kirigakure forehead protector with bright blue bandana was placed securely on his forehead. Beside him was a beautiful woman in her twentieth, she had long, straight, blonde, hair bound with taut bandages and dark eyes. She wore a short sleeved black and purple blouse and black pants, both of which had a design similar to clouds on them, purple fingerless gloves and a chain of blue beads wound around her left hand. She had D breast size. She also wore the standard Kumo forehead protector, sandals and kanai holster which was strapped to her right thigh. She also wore bandages around her arms and legs as well as a red belt around her waist. She crossed her arm over her chest in X formation and looked at her red hair companion, behind her was another five hunter nin. You're still a flashy one as always, Taicho, it is you who do all the fighting not me, replied the newly named Rusui in relaxing tone. This boy is their Taicho? thought Sasuke and Sakura, he isn't much older than me. He is young yet very powerful. To be able to order the hunter nin like that, his look is so familiar, thought Menma. This chakra signature and his look, let's see, it is, him, thought Kasumi, Kashina and Kakashi in shocked and later excitement. They found who they were looking for. It is really, him, is he here to finish us off? thought Zabuza and his comrades warily. The figure stood up before Rusui, smiles cheerily. Greeting Konoha Shinobi, Zabuza san and comrades. Now, before we have a talk let clean up a bit shall we? It is going to be a long talk said the figure before raised his left hand up and waved some hand signs. Sweden. Mazarapa, spoke the figure mentally as large amount of water gushed out from his mouth, washed away remain of the bandits as well as the blood into the water below. Now there was no sign that the remains were even there before, except for the wet ground. Aft it was done, he turned toward Zabuza's group and with his hand, motioned them to come closer. Zabuza looked at Manjetsu and nodded as they along with the man identical to Manjetsu but younger and Haku came closer to them. Kashina looked as if she wanted to say something but remained silent as the look from the hunter nin squads shut her up, silently. Request, her not to intervene with the upcoming conversation. The red hair figure took out a scroll, unfurled it and read it to Zabuza and his group. Zabuza Momochi known as Karigakur no Kijin and Zabuza of the Seven Swordsmen and Associatives are pardoned by Godaim Mizukaj for your crime against Yandaimi Mizukaj Yagura. You were requested return to Karigakur at once and reinstated. Signed Godaim Mizukaj made to Rumi, the said group spotted a healthy grin at this and this was returned by red hair figure. Zabuza chuckled before spoke, 
You are still look good as always Gaki, brat. The hunter nin tensed at this but a look from the said person eased them. The red hair young man smiled and replied, You look the same, Manjetsu Senpei, Zabuza Senpei, Suigetsu, Haku Sen I'm glad that you could return home. Without you, the village is so boring. The white hair man with white tooth now known as Suigetsu smiled widely, Oh, you missed us. What is with that girl over there? Your girl ah, he wasn't able to finish his sentence as he was bonked in the head by the still smiling Naruto. His hand moved fast as a lightning, no one saw that his hand moved from one place to another. To almost everyone, it seemed that the guy named Suigetsu was hit by an invisible force. That is not nice Suigetsu. To state it so quickly like that but it is to be expected from you, spoke the man calmly. Manjetsu seemed to be in doubt of something so, he motioned him to spoke up, what is the matter? Manjetsu Senpei, is something bothering you? Yeah, it isn't seemed like you are lying but I want you to clarify something. What is it Senpei? Asked Naruto in confusion. There was already some possibility going on in his mind. How? Why are you here? You're the most trusted person of Yagura. No, not that. The question is that how did you stay so calm about the whole thing? You are so close to Yugura if I remember right, for the rebellion to one and there is new Mizukage. It means that either Yugura is imprisoned or killed. How the hell do you so calm about this? I mean you are supposed to be one of the most loyal people in Yugura's army. If I know you well then I expect you to at least attempt to kill us for betraying him not just come here and recruit us back. To your cage's number one enemy no less. I have nothing against you, I understand, everyone do but it is ridiculous, he practically screamed at him but he shrugged it off. Calm down Manjetsu Senpei, it is true that I'm loyal to him. No loyal isn't the right word, he is one of the most precious people of mine and I never betrayed any of my precious people unless they betrayed me, Manjetsu looked at him oddly but he didn't pay attention, but I have to stop him. Zabuza and Suigetsu looked at him in confusion, before you guys think that I betrayed Shisho, master. Then you were wrong. I didn't betray him, I just released him from his nightmare and returned to his true self. Return to his true self. What do you mean by that? asked, screamed everyone in confusion. I will explain when we get back. It wasn't nice for the outsiders to know about our village's secret, isn't it? Anyway, Shisho said that he was sorry for everything that he ever done during the time when he wasn't himself. He got a nod from everyone. Suigetsu then spoke up. Hmm, you are right. Now, he turned along with Naruto and Kiri Nin toward Kashina and her team. Let's meet with them, shall we? This is quite a reunion if I said myself, eh? Naruto, getting a gulp of shock from Konoha's shinobi. The shinobi groups from Konoha gasped from the shock. They couldn't believe that the missing person that they tried so hard to find was here, right now on here of all places. N. Naruto, stuttered Kashina in disbelief, is it, is it really you? The said person stared at her in silence and gave her nothing but a neutral face. Hello, Kashina san. She frowned because of the way he addressed her. It seemed that your team are facing a hard time, the first experience outside the village. The silence gave away the answer. The silence went on for some time before Menma decided to break up the silence by asked him in hushed tone. Naruto, Ni san, is that really you? He still couldn't believe that the figure in front of him was in fact his missing brother understandably because the feeling was so different. Before Naruto's disappearance, the brothers had roughly equal skill but now the powerful figure in front of him who was identified as his brother. No, just had the same name as him. There was no way in hell that his brother could be strong. Or was he? Naruto turned his head and tried his best to prevent a scowl from forming on his face and kept neutral face. Hello Menma Teme. You look the same as always, Menma was silence but slightly delight as his brother actually noticed him because he always wanted him to look at him as his equal or so he thought. Naruto continued, you seem to improve a lot I see. Congratulations, you were able to survive the battle against this, Haku, and Suigetsu here. Even with help from Kasumi or Sasuke, that is still quite a feat in itself. Naruto, praised, him. Menma gritted his hand tightly at this remark. This speech could be interpreted in two ways, one it could be that it was a praise as to him Suigetsu and Haku were powerful on their own right so, to survive in the battle against them was something to be marveled especially for the inexperienced genin like him who never fought against the real enemies shinobi like both of them before. The demon brothers wasn't counted because to him other than their teamwork, they weren't any strong compared to either Suigetsu or Haku, 
both of them even though were around the same age as him but they were professional compared to him who was a mere rookie, a powerful one but still a rookie. On the other hand, it could be that he was mocking him because even though he had the support from Kasumi and Sasuke that still they couldn't defeat even a single enemy. This damaged his pride greatly but he tried to calm down as he did so, he saw the look in his brother's eyes. It wasn't the eyes of the person whom he saw as a nuisance and at some extent's rival couple of years ago, it was, the eyes of the true shinobi. The one who he knew he could never have any chance of winning. To compare his current strength with that of his brother, it was like comparing a kitten with a full-grown lion. He was now wary of his brother. Not that he could call him that anymore due to what he and their family done to him but still he could try to fix that. Sasuke took a glance at the boy, no, a young man in front of him. He was fuming inside, how dare someone who wasn't much older than him had more power and authority than he was. He was an Uchiha, elite of the village. He was trying to force the marriage contract to Kasumi for a while but she would turn him down every time, saying that she was in love with someone else. She would be, his, one way or another. He was glad that her bitch of a brother disappeared from the village those years ago since he was in the way when he tried to claim her for himself, not to mention he, Naruto was far more powerful than him, Sasuke, was before he left. Now he was back, probably more powerful than ever to be able to talk with someone more powerful than, him, like Zabuza so casually. He would kill him some day, after he got enough power to kill Itachi to avenge his clan and before he killed him he would make sure to force him in that blasted Menma watched as he had his way with Kasumi. He would enjoy that look on their face, his day dreaming continued, completely unaware that Naruto and Yugito shifted their eyebrows when he had those thought and swore internally that they would broke him for even had those thought. Sakura just thought that the red hair man seemed powerful but still no match for her, Sasuke-kun, and she pictured numerous scene when Sasuke coolly beat a Naruto and his fellow Kiri Shinobi into the ground. How pathetic. Tazune just prayed and thanked to his gods all over and over again that he lived past the day and now Gato was dead. Kashina was overjoyed yet slight anger and her son's remark of his brother but quickly overwhelmed by guilt because she knew the fact that it was his family and village and made him to turn out like what he was now. Kakashi was, well, expressionless but inside he was dancing with joy because his little brother was still alive he still needed to investigate about his association with Kirigakure. He thought, I'm happy that he is still alive and well but Sensei isn't going to like this at all. His son is with Kiri all along he would be pissed but I can't let him do something stupid. Konoha and Kiri aren't exact alliance so, we couldn't get him back by force since he is their shinobi now otherwise it will cause international incident. I'm sorry sensei but it isn't going to do us any good even, if, we could bring him to Konoha. He ended the thought sadly as his sensei Minato specifically requested him to search for Naruto and if possible brought him back to Konoha. He used to report back to his sensei empty-handed, now even though he could reported that he found Naruto but the fact that he couldn't bring him back would disappointed him and he hated to do that. Kasumi had different thought from her twins and teammates, her heart became warmth and happiness as soon as she saw him entered the bridge, she looked forward to meet him all along. She trained so hard in order to get to meet him again. Now he was here, right now, with her on this very bridge. So, she greeted him with a warm smile. Oni-chan. Naruto turned to look at her with a small but genuine smile, hello, Imouto chan You looked even more beautiful since the last time I saw you. It seems that you are getting stronger too, the said girl blushed furiously at his compliment. Naruto as clueless as he was, assumed that the blush was from his complimentary. Naruto o tuto, whispered Kakashi quietly. Naruto seemed to hurt him and turned his face to meet with Kakashi's and gave him a playful grin, hello, Kakashi ni san long time no see. All he got was a nod from the masked man, but to him it was the acceptance. He turned around and about to leave with the rest of his men, Zabuza and his groups and Yugito but the voice interrupted him. Sochi-kun. Wait, Kashina called out to his eldest child desperately. Naruto turned to face her with a neutral expression on his face and asked in bareness, what do you want Kashina-san? Make it quick because I wanted to finish this mission early and I'm not the type of person to keep people waiting. She flinched at the coldness of the respond but continue. Sochi-kun. Please stop calling me that, it is just Naruto to you. Interrupted Naruto as he narrow his eyes slightly, you lost that right a moment you and that man did what you did to me, she put her head down in shame. Oni-chan. He turned at Kasumi with professional face before forming a small smile, 
She flinched a bit but got over it when he smiled at her, please come back home. We are sorry even our parents do. Just come back for me and your friends please, she pleaded him but she got a shrug in return. Naruto's eyebrows twitched a bit when he saw her eye, it was her eyes that disturbed him. He could saw longing, loneliness, sincere, happiness and, love in her eyes directed toward him. He was very sorry that he broke her heart by not contacted her for all these years so, when he was about to said something he froze. What? Love? How could he miss that? He was so confused at these turn of events, could it be that she, it wasn't just a crush, she had the same look as Yugito and the girls he used to saved when they were alone together. Could it be that she loves him? Because that look was so similar to the one he and Yugito and couple of girls had when they saw each other. Decided to think of that later, he smiled apologetically. Sorry Imouto chan I can't go back with you, Kasumi's eye frowned in sadness at this before stuttered as she started to cry. Why are you doing this Oni-chan? Do you have any idea how much I looked forward to today, to see you again? And you are telling me that you are going to leave me again? She sobbed, please, Oni-chan, come back. Sorry Kasumi-chan, she looked at him as he suddenly appeared in front of her suddenly and gave her a warm hug. She returned it and tried her best to stop her sobbing. They enjoyed peaceful moment for a while before they broke free and gave each other a smile as Naruto flashed back to his comrade's position. I will see you very soon in the upcoming Chunin exam in Konoha. It will be fun for sure, he gave out a grin in excitement, which usually appeared when he either saw some cool techniques or engaging in the exciting battle which were rare for it to happen. Before they knew it, a very bright flash of white suddenly engulfed the whole group. After a few seconds, the light died down leaving no trace of them even there. After a few moments to recover from the shock, the team from Konoha along with Tazuna pondered about what was going on. They are gone, said Menma. He was confused about the whole thing, the confusion later turned into excitement because he was going to see him again in the Chunin exam. Kashina was nervous and devastated, she looked everywhere in search for her missing son before frowned in sadness. Her tear freely fell from her eyes, he is gone, he is really gone, she put both of her hand to cover her face as she cried freely. Kasumi despite the fact that her relationship with her family wasn't good due to what they had done to Naruto, still couldn't help but pity her mother. So, she decided to console her even for a bit by touching her shoulder, rubbing it in consoling manner. Kakashi looked around before signing sadly, he is gone. I can't even feel his chakra signature. He looked at the distance as he thought, hum I have no idea about the jutsu that he used to transfer himself and those people with him to somewhere else. Is it a space-time ninjutsu? A very impressive one. He commented with slight pride in his voice, Sensei isn't going to like this one bit but it can't be helped. He might already suppress me by miles. Sasuke was fuming, that guy had the jutsu that allowed him to disappear in thin air. He was extremely jealous and plotting of the way to obtain the jutsu for himself. He thought that it might be useful to kill him. Sakura a fangirl that she was, imagined her, Sasuke-kun, using the jutsu to teleport to her when she need help and the rest was our rape scenery which wasn't appropriate for children below age of 13. Before the atmosphere could be even more depressing, Kakashi came to the rescue, all right guys, the threat is gone. Let's go to Tazuna's home for today. We need all the rest we could get if we want to finish the mission. He turned to Tazuna, Tazuna-san, although Gato is already dead. We will still continue to guarding you until you completed the bridge as we spoke before. How long it will take to complete the whole bridge? Tazana put his hand to his chin, deep in thought, around three days will do. Until then you are welcome to stay at my place. Now, he raised his hand up in enthusiasm. Let go home and get some food. I think we should make a party tonight. Ha ha, he laughed in content. Everyone else smiled at his childish act. Well except for Sasuke who was brooding and Sakura who copied her crush's reaction. They then slowed made their way to Tazuna's house. A few moments later the outskirt of Kirigakure sometime Mizu no Kuni. Everyone from Zabaza's group was shocked out of their mind. The moment ago they were at the bridge and a few seconds later a bright flash suddenly blinded them and here they were. The place they never thought they would step in again, Kirigakure outskirts forest. They composed themselves for a moment, feeling a cold chill mist around them which slight swayed their feeling slightly. They were home at last. They wouldn't admit it aloud of course, but they were filled with joy. The silence filled the forest until Suigetsu was the first to say something. Wow. How did you do that? 
Suigetsu said in awe. He never thought that Naruto could do something like this. Zabuza nodded in agreement. Nice one Gaki, it isn't Hiraishin isn't it, if what I heard about it was right. Naruto smiled at them, of course not. This jutsu is among one of the most priced creation of mine. Haku, in curiosity, spoke for the first time, what is its name? That is a secret. He turned his back on them, now, let's get going shall we? At the end of his words, they started to quickly march their way to Kirigakure, their home. Well, for Zabuza's group. Yugito and Naruto purposely lagging behind the group as they held each other's hand and walked together side by side. The Anbu teams received the message as they blurred out of everyone's sight, disappearing completely. Yugito smiled warmly as she grazed the sight that Zabuza and Manjetsu arguing for silly thing while Suigetsu annoyed the Demon Brothers. They seemed to be annoyed but kept silence along the way but seemed so close to snap any time. She turned her head to meet with Naruto's warming grace. Her heart glowed as she looked at his eyes. They tried so hard not to kiss each other right away as they usually did when they were alone. They are an energetic batch aren't they? Yugito said with a smile which Naruto returned it with an equally heartwarming grin. Yes, they are. Yugito Haim, he said with a smile which made her blush slightly. They continued to walk hand in hand. Slowly, those hand found their ways to each other's waist, pulled them closer together. The distance between them and the rest of his companions seemed to be widening as Zabuza's group got so excited and ran fast. They in turn increased the speed to get caught up with them. At Zabuza's group they found themselves in the outskirt near the gate of Kirigakure. After a few moments of walking, they found themselves surrounded by around 10 Kirigakure's Anbu. Halt. State your business, the Anbu captain of the team seemed to be in thought for a moment before twitching his hand slightly. At that moment, the whole squads including the captain drew out their katana and the captain pointed it toward Zabuza. The said person tensed at this turn of event. What the hell? shouted Suigetsu in shock. He really didn't expect to get into trouble this fast as he heard that the civil war was already ended. Zabuza Momochi, former seven ninja swordsman of the mist, a rank missing nin of Kirigakure. As Anbu of Kirigakure, we have an order to, suddenly a voice was heard throughout the misty plain. At ease, Anbu San, we meant you no harm. The voice was calm and sincere yet displays no small amount of power from it. Show yourself. Whoever you are, said the captain impatiently. This was his first mission and he couldn't afford to fail. Not in front of his companion. Very well then, here I am, spoke the figure as the mist entered the background and formed into a person like shape. At first the squads tensed at this but it later changed into relaxation as they seemed to slowly understand what was going on. The Ambu captain tensed and sweat dropped slightly, he realized who he was talking to. The mist fade away, revealed a red hair figure along with blonde beauty who clung tightly to his arm. The captain realized his mistake and quickly sheathed his weapon before signaling his squads to do the same as they did so quickly. Faster than lightning, they bowed down to Naruto who seemed to be a bit uncomfortable with the sight. Forgive me Naruto-sama I didn't realize that those men are with you. Please forgive us for our insolence. Before he could spoke further, Naruto held his right hand up in resignation. No need to apologize to me, Anbu-san. You just follow the protocols. Now rise my friends, oh, don't bow to me or call me, Sama, ever again. I don't like it. We are fellow shinobi, not a noble or daimyo that you need to bow to, spoke Naruto in calm tone. After they heard him, they slowly got from the position and apologized to Zabuza which he accepted. The captain then asked Naruto again, Naruto-san, are those people? Yes, they are. They are coming with us. Could you please be kind and took us to Ka-chan? I bet she would kill me after I reported everything to her, the captain nodded in acceptance and grabbed all of them before Shun shined away. They reappeared inside Kirigakure. It was a busy place, just like how Konoha streets were except the buildings which were cylindrical-like structure. After they gained composure, they quickly made their way toward the Mizukage mansion which was also cylindrical in structure but far larger and taller than most of the building in the village. As they continued to walk, the crowds stopped what they were doing and looked at the groups in the mixture of awe, admiration and slightly happiness. Akane-sama is back, squealed the group of young girls when they saw Naruto. Naruto-sama, mommy, is it him? A young boy around four to five years old looked at his mother. Yes, sweetheart. He is here, Naruto smiled in content at the crowds. He was an outsider to this village when he first enters but the people here accepted him as one of their own. 
He loved this place and he would gave up almost everything to protect it. His companions including the girl beside him gave out a small smile at the sight. He was truly the life of this place. They stopped as they were at the front door of Mizukage's mansion. The two guards shinobi tensed when they saw Zabuza and Manjetsu. They were about to reach for their hidden kanais but stopped on track as Naruto moved toward them. The guard on the left in particular, he was a young man with black spiky hair. He also had black eye and oval-shaped face. He wore standard Kirigakure flak jacket and black shinobi sandals. Kirigakure headband wore securely on his forehead. Please let us enter Togi-san, these men are with me. Don't worry, they are not hostile, spoke Naruto. Hi. Please enter Naruto-san, the newly duped Togi respond in friendly tone. He nodded to the other guards as they opened the door and signaling the group to enter. Naruto gave them a pleasant smile before going in, with Yugito on hot pursuit and the rest of his companion followed him. The Anbu however's disappeared from everyone's sight, probably to resume the guarding patrol around the village. On their ways to Mizukage's room, Naruto suddenly stopped as he allowed smile to grace his face once more. In front of him was an adult man, with a head of messy, light gray hair, pink pupilless eyes and what seemed to be a stitch-like scar running from under his left eye, all the way down his cheek. He wore a gray, sleeveless shirt with the Kirigakure forehead protector attached to the front, short-sleeved mesh armor over which he also wears a green poncho along with a turquoise sash around his waist, paired with a green apron over his pants. He wore a pair of brown boots, and on his back he carried a staff-like pole weapon with uneven-sized hooks with a green flower on the larger end. This man is Yagura, former, Yandaimi Mizukage. He also gave a small smile at the red hair boy in front of him. In this story, Yagura has a body of adult male so, he is taller than he was in anime. Zabuza and Manjetsu were in their own world now. In front of them was one of the most powerful shinobi ever produced from Kirigakure. A collective thought went through their mind, fuck. This man in front of there was their target since the breakout of the civil war, the very same man who started the bloodline purge which lead to the civil war in the first place. What the hell is this? What was his motive? And more importantly, if the rebellion truly won the war as Naruto said and from the villagers reaction then how the hell was he still alive? Let alone stood here as if nothing happened. Before the tension could continue, Yagura decided to greet them with a smile. Greeting, Zabuza and companions, I hope that our village doesn't give you too much trouble, he spoke calmly. N, no not at all, stuttered Zabuza. In front of him was a man who could kill him in the brink of eyes so, he need to be very careful with his words. The only reason why he was able to escape in the first place from his failed assassination of Yugura was because it was an ambush and even then he could not do anything to him despite his skill as one of the swordsmen and several defect hunter nins on his side during the attack. What the hell is wrong with him? Thought Manjetsu. He might be goofy most of the time but he wasn't a fool. Yagura wasn't the kind of person to be friendly at anyone, let alone them. He couldn't blame him though. Consider how harsh his life was before became the Mizukage. It seemed that the only person who he was truly comfortable with were either Yutakata and Naruto or Mei. I am back from my mission, Shisho, master. I am about to go to report to, Ka-chan, mother. Mind to tag along asked Naruto. It was more of an invitation rather than a question. Yes of course, said Yagura as they began to move again. This time Yagura was also among them. They finally reached the front door of the Mizukage office. After some knocking, they received permission to enter as they opened it with pride. The sight they met was, well intense. In front of them was their Mizukage, put her head down in extreme concentration and moved her hand in extremely fast paced. Furiously signing papers one by one at the speed that one could even compare it with the rakage when his Raiden no Yoroi activated. They continued to freeze just like that for a few moments before she regained her composure and smiled at them. Zabuza, Manjetsu. You are finally back, said the auburn haired woman kindly. The said individuals just shrugged their shoulder and replied, We are not the one to be killed that easy may. Do you forgot who we are? This is more of a statement than a question. The newly introduced Mei just smiled and graces her eyes to scan the room. Her forest green eyes met with Naruto's ocean blue orb as her grace softened. Sochi. Naruto just smiled genuinely at her, I am back. Ka Chan. At the speed that rival Hiraishin, Naruto felt a red blurs tackle him into a tight hug. He had to try so hard to balance his step to prevent himself from falling. 
His eyes widen a bit before soften as he hugged her back. Everyone smiled at the loving sight in front of them, mother-son embrace. No matter how old they were, the sight was still beautiful. The hug continued for a brief moment before they separated as May ruffled her, son, soft crimson hair. Sochi, welcome home, thank, Ka Chan. The 1500th mission accomplished, said Naruto with pride as his mother continued to ruffle his hair. That is awesome Sochi. Now, let give a report shall we? Said Mei with a smile. A moment later, she reappeared in her Mizukage's seats as she put both of her arms under her chin in anticipation. The smile never left her face, however her body language indicated that she was serious, let hear your report. Naruto straightened himself and started the report, hi. Mission squad leader Naruto Uzumaki Turumi, Junin of Kirigakure will now commences the report of the joint retrieval mission with Kumogakure. After we exited Kirigakure with our team, we came across the information of the exact whereabouts of seven ninja swordsmen of the mist, Zabuza Momochi and Manjetsu Hazuka, our targets. I personally lead our team which consisted of me, Yugito ni Junin of Kumogakure and team, Genkishi, 1, Tanami no Kuni. The retrieval was successful as Zabuza Momochi, Manjetsu Hazuka and their accomplices are successfully extracted from Nami no Kuni bridges. However, there is certain complication in this mission. Complication. You always have a flawless mission record. What happens? Asked Yugura in curiosity. He hold his apprentice's ability in high regard. He wouldn't have any complication in doing any mission or so as he thought. Team Genkishi wasn't pushover either. They were among the elite of the village. I shall continue then. In this mission, it is out of our knowledge that Zabuza Momochi and his accomplices had their own mission to kill the bridge builder Tazuna. However, it wasn't Tazuna that was the problems. It was the team which protect him. Team? Which village they hailed from? Asked May Curiosity. She started to pray that it wasn't the village that she thought in her mind. It seemed that fate was against her as Naruto replied with chilling voice, they are from Kanogakure no Sato. The temperature of the room started to drop slightly as Mei was fuming. Everyone knew it very well, it was mother in strict to protect her child. In Mei's case, it was stronger than usual. Every time that any girls from civilian councils attempted to flirt with her, Sochi, she would felt a sensation to melt them into rubble. Mei quickly calmed herself down as she noticed the demon brothers, Suigetsu, Haku and even Zabuza felt uncomfortable. She smiled as she signaling him to continue. The team from Konohagakure consisted of, Akane no Shi, Kashina Uzumaki Namikaze, Sharingan no Kakashi, Kakashi Hataki as their Junin sensei. The Genin consisted of Uzumaki siblings, Menma and Kasumi Uzumaki Namikaze, the last loyal Uchiha, Sasuke Uchiha and Sakura Haruno. They are the protection team of Tazuna. With their collaboration, we are able to succeed in the secondary objective of the mission to eliminate or cease the activity of Gato Corporation in Nami no Kuni as per the request of the daimyos. The objective is completed with the death of Gato at the hand of our hunter Nin during the cross fire. There is no civilian casualty or collateral damage to the area. I hereby conclude the report. The whole report ended with professional tone. May seemed to be in thought before addressing everyone, all right, well done everyone. You are all dismissed except Naruto, Yagura, Yugito and Suigetsu. We have much to discuss. She turned her head to Zabuza and Manjetsu with the Demon Brothers not far behind. Zabuza Momochi and Manjetsu Hazuka, I Mei Terumi, Godem Mizukage officially pardoned you and your accomplices for your crime against Yandaimi Mizukage Yagura. Both of you would be reinstated as the members of the new Seven Ninja Swordsmen of the Mist. Both of you still have the swords in your possession, correct? Seeing as both of them nodded their head, she continued. Both of you will be automatically granted a membership. For Haku Yuki, you will be instated as Chunin as you are trained by Zabuza and already possess enough skill to be one. For Gozu and Maizu, both of you will be reinstated as Chunin however, you might choose to participate in the Anbu recruit entrance examination. It depends on your choice. She paused as she awaited their reaction. They seem to be satisfied, all right. All of you except for those who I call your name. Dismiss. Those who she didn't call the name quickly made their way out of the door. Suigetsu felt awkward as he was the only one who wasn't offered any rank and wonder what they were going to discuss with him. Seeing his friend fidget, Naruto decided to came to the rescue, so, Ka-chan. What are we going to talk about? Mei gave a pleasant smile at him and Yugito, it is about the upcoming Chunin exam. 
Chunin exam, it is conducted in Konoha this year isn't it Ka Chan? Naruto questioned his surrogate mother who smiled at him. Yes Sochi, I want you to show our power to the world that despite the civil war, we are still one of the five great hidden village. We have four months to prepare so be ready. I will Ka Chan. Do you have any idea about who will join my little team? My team currently short on one member. Suigetsu listened to the conversation very carefully. Being a dense man as he was, he couldn't help but wondered why he was here in this room. Technically, he wasn't supposed to hear this conversation, right? So, he interrupted them, um, guys. I am happy that you were excited but what about me? Mei twitched her eyes slightly before she went deep in thought before suddenly blurted out a laugh in embarrassment. Oops. My bad, thank for reminding me that. Suigetsu, you will be instated as a genin. The silence graced the room for a while before Suigetsu suddenly shouted aloud. What? Me genin. Everyone winced at the volume of his voice, they couldn't believe that he would be, this, loud. Suigetsu suddenly calmed himself down and muttered out apology, go menasei, mizukage sama for my initial outburst but seriously. Suigetsu, this is Ka Chan you are taking to. If she got angry then I might not be able to save you, Naruto berated him, it was more likely a friendly advice than that of the scold. Mei continued, Suigetsu, you will be put in a set of three-man team with Naruto Sochi as your sensei. The rest of the members, you will meet them in time. Since, technically you never graduated from academy but have more than enough skill and experience to be one so, I will let it slide for this time. You can dismiss now. You need to rest, Suigetu gave a grateful bow before dismissed with a normal shunshin, body flicker. Can't let the council interfere isn't it Ka Chan? Naruto said with a smirk. She gave out a grin, that is right Sochi. You know how annoying it is that the council try to set you up with their daughters, nieces. Those damn annoying geezers. Naruto and Yugito chuckled at the jab, they knew how annoying that those council members could be. All they did were complained but they couldn't do anything about it. Ever since Naruto became a powerful and famous shinobi in his home village, all they tried to do was to set up a marriage contracts with him. Even though Yugito and other girls are already engaged to him but it seemed to not working at all. It took Yugura and Naruto to stop the overly protective mother and her unofficially daughter-in-law from incarnated them on spot when they tried to push Naruto into CRA with their daughters, nieces whom Naruto absolutely had no interest in but politely declined. After the report of the mission is over, Yugito left against her own will as she needed to return to Kumo to report to her rakage, but not before gave him a quick kiss which he returned it with passion. They broke the kiss as Yugito departed and excused herself but before winking at him in which he returned it. Naruto also thought of something and said, See you later then Ka Chan. I will go to Shisho places, I will return for a dinner, Mei nodded in acceptance. Naruto and Yugura gave a quick bow and left the room via the door. Yugura and Naruto walked to Yugura's compound, on their way they saw several villagers whom smiled at the teacher, apprentice duo. They smiled back at the people around them but said nothing. After a few moments of silent Yugura started the conversation, It is beautiful isn't it? Naruto? Naruto replied in enthusiasm, Hi, Shisho, I can't help but wonder that this village was once referred to as the Bloody Mist. It is all thank to you, replied Yugura in equally cheerful tone. You are truly something else Naruto. It seemed that my decision is right for once after all, at that fateful day. A smile grazed Naruto's face as he was in thought loudly, Hi, it was the day that you found me. That fateful day. Flashback seven years ago, Naruto aged seven years old at the time. We should get going soon Mizukage sama said one of the five Junin level Kiri shinobi. They currently sat around a campfire along with a familiar young man with pink pupilous eyes and what seemed to be a stitch-like scar running from under his left eye. He had his staff-like pole weapon with uneven sized hooks with a green flower on the larger end laid beside him. His name was Yagura, the Yandaimi Mizukage. It was a very dark night so. They decided to build the camp here. They were a few meters away from the water steam. We are in no hurry. Beside, she told me that something interesting is going to happen. Although I have absolutely no idea what is she talking about, Yugura spoke calmly. But, no but, we will stay here for tonight. Beside it is not wise to travel at night isn't it? Especially in the forest that those Konoha, elite, are so specialized in, the rest of Kiri Shinobi agreed at his logic so they sat down in silence. 
the only voices they heard were the wind in the crooking insect. Suddenly the bush around them vibrant violently, alerted them. One Kiri Junin silently waved some hand seals as he spit a water steam from his mouth to extinguish the fire, effectively shut of the only sources of light from the already dark field with the exception of the moonlight of course. They suddenly disappeared from their previous location into the forest behind their respective position. Their hand already grabbed their respective weapons, waiting for the currently unknown foe to reveal itself. A red blur suddenly crashed into the middle of the camp. It was a child, no more than seven years old. He was in pain as evidence from the bruise all over his body. He couldn't get up as judged from the state that he was in. What happened next made Yugura's blood boiled. A group of seven men with standard Konoha flak jacket and headband. They hovered over the downed red-haired boy as they drew out their sword and wooden club, ignoring the menacing looks on the boy's face. Well well, what do we have here? Demon's brother, said one of the men menacingly. Another man rubbed his wooden club in anticipation. Let beat him up boys so, we can send a message to that demon bitch. It is a shame that we can't do a thing to her. She would be fun to break. Off well, I guess we will settle on her lovely brother instead. At the end of their speech they raised their respective weapons up high over their head, prepare to beat him. The crazed look in their face, the boy closed his eyes in acceptance. So, this is how I am going to die. I am so sorry everyone. My dear Imoudo chan thought the boy in sadness. Yugura decided to intervene despite his guards, protest not to. He pointed his fingers in gun-like manner toward the men as he shouted with anger. Sweden. Sweetana, water release. Water severing wave. Suddenly a water droplets condensed over his finger and instantly the high pressure jet of water was fired from his fingers and easily pieced the heart of one of the Konoha nins. Sensing their comrades, death, they jumped out all over the place in an attempt to dodge but Yugura didn't want to take any chance. With couples of extremely preceded shots, all but one Konoha shinobi were neutralized. The last shinobi was currently in pain as he currently laid on the ground gasped his badly bleeding stomach as he roared in pain which ironically just like the boy he was about to beat him to the death. The red-haired boy slowly opened his eyes in disbelief, he thought that the bastard Konoha Nin were about to kill him to get back at his beloved sister who held Kayubi's soul. He felt a warm hand grabbed his shoulder. He saw a young man, with a head of messy, light grey hair, pink pupilous eyes and what seemed to be a stitch-like scar running from under his left eye who currently on his knee beside him. What was captivated him about the man was that he looked at him with a genuine smile, a look of understanding that he always yawned for. The man then suddenly stood up and walked slowly toward the downed Konoha Nin. He seemed to be cowered in fear as he realized who the man was. Yugura took out his trusty staff and hold them in the execution stance as he spoke in the chilled tone which completely contrasted his kind expression before, of all horrible things that I saw in the world. I never expect the Konoha Nin to willingly and enjoy harming the innocent child. I shouldn't be surprised actually, for the shinobis from the village that massacred many of my brethren to do thing like this. The Konoha Nin was in fear so, he tried to plead for his life, please spare me. But Yugura seemed to heard none of it, no, Konoha Nin eyes widen at that, you hear that. A scum like you should just die. The world will be grateful. Konoha Nin then spit his blood, saliva at Yugura's feet as he came closer. Why do you protect that demon lover? It is our job to punish anyone who protect and support the Atomy. Yugura slammed the sharp end of his hookstaff at the downed man's stomach in fury. He did it for a few times before stopped. Leave the man to gain his lost breath, for doing what you did to this child. You will die. Konoha Nin only glared at him with every courage and hatred he could mustard, you won't get away with this. Do you realize who I am? Which village I come from? Once the councils know of this they will burnt your backwater village into the ground. Sinking into the sea where the worm likes you Belen. Yugura punched him again only this time at his chest. Very hard. He channeled his chakra into his staff, it glowed brighter and brighter blue color as he spoke, hardly, let them come. They will soon learn to fear me. Konoha has changed from the vision of Shodiami and Nidiami Hokage. They stand no chance against us. They will know the wrath of me. Sambi no Yagura. He finished his speech by slash the throat of the shinobi with his staff with a lightning speed, killing him. He snorted in disgust before turned to his guards whom decided to made appearance after he killed the man. He ordered them in commanding tone. What are you doing? Dispose the body, 
They did so as commanded, if there is no body part then no evidence will be pointing at us. My, visit, to Kumo and Iwagakira's top secret anyways, he flashed to the frightened and odd struck child. He smiled as he was on his knee and ruffled his hair. I will take him back to his home. Are you sure this is wise Mizukage sama Asked the Junin in slightly frightened tone, he was afraid that Yagura was going to kill him. His train of thought stopped as he saw Yagura stopped ruffled the boy's hair and was glaring at him, the greys that piece his very soul, shit. Mizukage sama is so scary, I can't blame him though consider how harsh his life was during that bastard Sandame rule. He composed himself and said in respectful tone, I mean we don't even know who he is. He might be a spy send to kill you. Yugura said nothing as he grazed the boy's eyes again before smile. Fear not, my fellow Kiri Shinobi. He is no harm, while he continued to look into his eyes, looking for any kind of deception which he found none. The boy thought, warm. He understands who I am and accept it. I wonder what he will do with me. I am just the, annoying, children of the so-called, great, Yandaimi Hokage while he is the Mizukage, he thought sadly, his mood was sour when he thought of his father. Yagura signed slightly before looked face to face with the boy, young Ling, since you see all this. Can you promise me that you will never speak of this to your parent? Where is your home? The boy nodded as saw no harm of lying to the man who saved his life so, he spoke in stuttered tone, K, Konoha M, Mizukaj Sama. His mood dropped as he was in silence again, I am never wanted at home. My parents ignore me for a sake of my siblings who hold great power within them. The villagers spoiled them silly and they were happy while I comma I was alone. My siblings always got anything they want, be the toys, foods, clothing, present and training while I got almost none of it from my parents and their friends. Yugura felt no deception in that so, he decided to ask some more, who are your parent then child? Why are you here alone? Why those bad people beat you? The boy looked down in sadness, my parents always locked me out at night, unintentionally, my sister held Kiyubi's soul while my younger brother held the chakra so, they got all attention away. Those people are not the first to hurt me. They are plenty more in the past, they always got away with everything. Yagura seethed at this, my parents, Yagura winced at the contempt of the word, parents, but he said nothing, is Minato Namikaze, Yandaimi Hokage and Kashina Uzumaki, the Red Death. The whole group had the visible shocked on their face at the revelation. Yugura was well surprised but hide it very well, they are the worst. They never noticed me in anything, all my accomplishment. To be honest I hate almost everyone in my family except my sister since in the family she is the only one who give a damn about me, he paused to hold his breath. He continued as more and more anguish emotions seemed to bottle up as time passed by, but because of my good relationship with my sister. I got beaten in place of her. They thought that if they hurt me then she will broke consider her relationship with me. He seethed in anger, worst of all, my parents seem to be so ignorant about it. They always brush me aside when I asked for their help. They never try to help me even the evidence is so obvious what the villagers did to me, they even have the nerve to denounce me as the heir to both clans. They said I am unworthy of it despite never know what I am capable of. Tonight I got locked out again and this is what happens, he started to cry again with another Kiri shinobi need beside him and attempted to soothe him by robbing his shoulder in comforting manner. Yugura was furious, Minato Namikaze, Kashina Uzumaki or whoever they were. They didn't have the right to leave their children out alone like that. However, he calmed himself down and steeled his resolved, I see. Even though I bring him back to Konoha, it will not change anything for this boy. He glanced at the boy and thought, maybe I will use this. He closed his eyes before opened them again. This time instead of the pink pupilous eyes as it used to be. It became slightly darker. The pupil of his eyes glowed sapphire blue like colors with white colored wave stigma, like in Japanese's drawing, appeared in both pupil. Okay, I know that it is hard to imagine, but please bear with me. He looked into Naruto's eyes that widen with odd from great impression with his eyes. Relax, young one, I meant no harm. What is your name? He asked softly. Naruto replied with awe evidence on his face as he took a glance at Yugura's eyes Naruto. Naruto Nami, Uzumaki. Mizukage Sama. Suddenly Yugura felt the pull that affected his very being. Before he knew it, he was in the castle room which he assumed that it was the boy's mind. He kept on going and going, in process opened several doors. Couples of minutes later, he finally opened the last door to the next room. It was so big and there were numerous floating shards of images in it. 
In this room, there was neither floor nor ceiling visible just the bright blue sphere laid at the center of it. He floated around looking for a clue. He saw and heard set of memories, mind, thought and finally he reached the central of the boy's mind. He could saw collective memories hovered around a single large bright spot. He glanced at the center of the bright spot and saw an exact replica of the boy but with adult body with his eyes closed, floating in that bright sphere. He came up with the realization. So, that is his true self. He looked at the eye-closed child encased in light. Let's see his resolve. He laid his palm on the surface of the bright sphere and mentally shouted. Kai, release. At the end of his word, the sphere glowed brighter and brighter. It started to crack bit by bit. He looked worriedly, oh Kami, so this is it. His will is not strong enough. I shouldn't be too rushing at this. After all he is just a child. What happened next shocked him. Instead of continuing to broke, the crack started to heal itself as it glowed brighter and brighter to the point that Yagura had to shield his eye with his arm in order to block such a blinding yet very beautiful light. Behold my Kekai Jenke, Tankyo Kogan, 1, granted by me being the container of, Sanbi. Unlike Sharingan, it doesn't hypnotize other people's mind to control it, rather it allowed me to see it clearly. Be the person's resolves, memory or emotion, no matter how well suppressed I can see them all. This ability is similar to Yamanaka clan's Shintenshin no Jutsu, mind switching technique. But with some key differences he smiled as he saw the sphere gotten brighter and brighter, to think that he is able to overcome the risk of mind awakening aspect of this sacred dujutsu, he will go so far. He looked forward with a smile as the light died down and revealed a full grown red haired man with his eyes close. Yagura then suddenly felt the pull as he felt the wind breeze against his body. Now he realized that he exited the mindscape, he looked at the boy before him and smiled before said, Now, youngling, Naruto suddenly gave him full attention. I will give you a proposal. 1. You will return to Konoha and never speak of this to anyone. Naruto looked down at this, or 2. Naruto perked up in anticipation. You come with us to Kirigakure. This caused a mixed reaction to build up within Kiri Junin, Anbu. Even though they respected their cage's decision and they felt that they can trust the boy, they still wonder what to do. To take other Kagesa children away from their village was a huge treason, enough to potentially cause another great shinobi war in which they absolutely have no intention to be the cause of it. Naruto on the other hand, heavily considered the second option but on the other hand he felt bad as he would leave his sister heartbroken but it need to be done. As much as he hated to admit, his family was capable of protecting her. He need to send her a message somehow though. One of the Kiri Nin was quick to voice his opinion, Mizukage Sama, it is not that we don't trust you or this child, or anything, he suddenly felt the glared from everyone present except for Naruto who does not know what to do but he ignored it, how are we supposed to do it? Even if we successfully take him to our village, his physical attribute will cause the widespread of doubt and rumors. That alone can spark the war between Karigakar and those tree hugger. While I am very proud about our village's military strength, seven swordmen of the mist, he thought of Kisame and Manjetsu Albelt bitterly at the former and smirk at the latter, as well as yours and Yutakata Sama, but it may be too demerit. Unless we somehow keep his existence a secret or change his physical form, I doubt that he will last very far in this world. Yugura put his hand under his chin in thought. He had to admit that his subordinate's claim did have a point. He was deep in thought for a while until his eyes slightly widened from realization. He remembered his best friend from his childhood, Mei Terumi who was also the supposed heiress of the clan. He once heard from her that she always wanted to have children but never found any man she could end up with. She even said to him that she considered to adopt some children but her status as a heiress stopped her from doing so. She need a heir, heiress to inherit the clan so, to find someone to be able to replace her in case she died was not an easy feat. He took a quick glance at Naruto, he remembered that Terumi clan is the cousin of Uzumaki. Yeah they are in this story, from his grandfather. He gave a grin to Naruto who was completely lost along with his own subordinates who were in the same boat as the boy. You have a point but I happen to know the solution for this little problem. I have to admit that this one might be a bit risky but if success then Kiri will surely become one of the best in the entire elemental nations. Mizukage Sama, I don't understand, one of the masked members said in confusion. I will take him in, his subordinates gulped, but as you said I will keep his existence a top secret. His existence will not be revealed until he is ready to take on the world by himself. But what about that Mizukage Sama? Shouldn't the councils be informed about this? 
The shinobi force may kill him if he ever set foot in our village for their completely valid reasons, another asked him wearily. Yugura kept calm for the whole thing although inside he was jumping with joy. As his subordinates somewhat on his side, it was way much easier to do what he intended to. Well, he reached the point of no return this time. Whenever he met someone with similar background as he was, he will help them with the best of him abilities, that was how he became the Mizukage in the first place when the Sandame Mizukage's power hungry and cruelty became increasingly obvious even to the citizens. He can gain allied even from most unlikely sources, probably because his childhood hell somehow changed him into a better person. Even more so than some of the priests. That is easy. You don't have to be worried about this Mizu, Mist. I can just claim that I picked him up and he is to be my personal apprentices. Naruto's eyes widen at this, for his shinobi's status I will handle it. You remember Mei Chan. Seeing that his subordinates nod he continued, she always wanted to have a child of her own even though she never have a man in her life, he had a snickers but choose to ignore it, I bet she will be thrilled about adopting this youngling here. As Naruto is half Uzumaki, we can just claim that he is her long lost cousin she adopted as her son or whatsoever. He will be granted a clan status but his acceptance from the village will have to be earned by his own share of work, with my full support of course. Yugura turned to Naruto as with most of his subordinates, he offered Naruto a hand as his subordinates watched with anticipation, now child, will you accept our proposal? Naruto makes up his mind before straightened up, forgive me, my dearest Imaudo chan It has to be done, I will come back to you, someday, he smiled as he grabbed his hand. I accept. Mizukage sama Yugura helped him stand before addressing him, no need for formality, you will not need to address me as Mizukage except when we are in the important event. Seeing him nod Yugura was about to motion him to follow but Naruto's next word stopped him. Anyo. What should I call you then? I don't even know your name but you know mine already, Naruto asked innocently just like a curious child as he was. One of the shinobi presented was about to answer but Yugura's glance silenced him. Yugura smiled as he said. You may call me Yugura Shisho, Master, Flashback N. They arrived at the compound. It was quite large, about the size of the Uchiha clan though much more likely as there were lots of trees and a series of stream that passed through the compound. Just like the Heaven Garden, search for Japanese garden in Google if you are lost, Naruto stopped by and look around. This compound is the still same. Though, he frowned slightly, it is too empty. It is not a surprise, Naruto turned to the approaching Yugura. When you are gone for three weeks, most if not all of my clanmen has been assigned a mission in several countries. They should be back by tomorrow. Naruto was about to reply but interrupted by a charming voice, Lacus Klein's voice from Gundam Seed and its sequel, You are back. Both of you, I am so glad. Both of them turned their head to met the sight of a very beautiful young girl with dark blue hair and reddish eyes, Look at my profile under the name Azane, you will get her image I am horrible at describing people. She smiled warmly at the pair, hiding behind her legs were a pair of children, boy and girl. They hide themselves behind their mother, only put their head out to see the people in front of them. They were of the same age of three years old so, they were twins. Evan thought they were twins, they looked very different from each others. The boy was the exact replica of Yugura but with his mother's eyes while his sister was her mother's but with Yugura's eyes. Naruto was the first to say the greeting, Azane Oni Chan. I hope that they don't trouble you too much. No, they are perfect. My two little angels, she turned to her children with a smile, causing them to smile in response. Mamoru. Naruto glanced at the boy with a smile, Shizuru. You are a good boy and girl for you, mother, right? Yagura greeted them with a smile of his own. Faster than lightning, the said pair louched themselves toward the two grown men with a bear hug. Due to their small size, they can only embrace the legs of the two men. The mini Yugura was currently hugging Naruto while Shizuru embraced her father. The older men ruffled the head of the children, makes them purr in content, don't get any pervert idea here. It is just affectionate touch. Azane smiled at the sight before coughing to gain the attention of the figures. The children reluctantly separated with a visible pout on their face which most find to be very cute. She then invited them into the compound in which they soon followed. Naruto stayed for a while, they also got a visit from Yutakata and his pregnant wife, look at the name Shirino then you will get her picture, as well as Hotaru who was his apprentices. 
Yagura and Utakata greeted each other before taking about random thing as with a Zane who talked with Shirino who gave her advice regarding the baby. Naruto simply starred to the empty space, enjoying silence and nature scenery of the garden in front of him. After a while, a couple of koi fish jumped up into the air on the surface before returned down to the lotus-filled lake. He smiled at the sight but later frowned as the fish's inability to sever its tie to water remind him that he need to return to Konoha once again. Even though there were lots of good memories there, those so-called blood families of his except for Kasumi, the shinobi forces and the villagers will surely cause him trouble. He tried and failed to calm himself down as his chakra started to rise up slightly before being forced down as he realized what he was about to do in front of the children and people he cherished. He came up with sudden realization and contemplate what will he do in five months from now. It would surely a very interesting trips and eye-opening for those blasted Konoha Nin. Yagura noticed that his apprentice started to spacing out so, he decided to include him in the conversation. Everyone except for the children seemed to notice the change in mood. Hence, they stood up and made their way toward him. Yagura was the first to approach him verbally. Thinking about you family. Naruto? Not so much Shisho, just ponder about their ability that all? He answered instantly, causing everyone to perk in interest. It wasn't the secret that Naruto had genuine interest regarding the jutsu and special abilities perhaps the traits from his Uzumaki lineages of being curious and creative at the same time. Yagura was confused, why? You are powerful Naruto. You don't need to worry about that. Naruto merely starred to the empty space again before change his glance to the group. Engaging in the conversation, it is not that Yugura Shisho. It is just that I wonder how Kashina will react when I told her that she wasn't the true heiress of Uzumaki clan. Neither are her children even my dear sister. Izane looked at Yugura in confusion before nudging him, causing him to voice his question for her, the true heiress of the Uzumaki clan. Sure I know she was powerful but why isn't she? Well, I can't say much about this because I really don't know much about your clan. Let talk about it shall we? I already told you almost everything about my clan. It is only fair that you tell me about yours since you have met them. I want to hear it too, Shirino spoke softly. She glanced at her husband who smiled at her as they turned to Naruto. Story please, Naruto Oji-san, the twin shouted in anticipation. Although they absolutely have no idea what is going on but they enjoyed listening to a story. Hi, hi, let have a seat shall we? Everyone sat down on the wooden floor or for the twins in their mother's lap as Naruto began his tale. The Uzumaki clan. Uzumaki Ichizoku, was a prominent clan in Uzushiogakure. They were distant blood relatives of the Senju clan and as such, both were on good terms. An alliance that extended onto their hidden villages, Konohagakure and Uzushiogakure. The shinobi of Konoha integrated Uzushiogakure's symbol onto their uniforms and flak jackets as well as on the shoulders of their uniforms as a sign of friendship and goodwill between the two villages, and continue to do so to this day, in memory of their so-called friendship even years after Uzushiogakure's fake destruction. Yagura raised his eyebrows a little, fake destruction. Oh well. Naruto gitted his teeth at this, the so-called alliance with Konoha is nothing but a fraud. Well, at least during the Sandame's rule. I don't blame Sandame Hokage though because he wasn't at fault here, he tried to run his village and help us as much as he could. It is actually the two advisors, almost all other clan of Konoha at the times and Danzo that sold our secret to Iwa, Kiri, Kumo and several minor villages that attacked our island. Yagura and Yutakata looked down, I see, our village is also at fault too. Naruto noticed the drop in mood so he quickly reassured them, rest assured Shisho, Yutakata ni. Your clan is our long-time alliance although very few actually knew about that. Fortunately for us, Kyoka-sama, too, anticipated this so, he informs Mito-sama and contact Koten-sama, 3, your clan leader at the time. Thank to our alliance and planning, we were able to escape the Uzushio before its system trap which basically massacred everyone that entered the island. We tried to contact Kashina in Konoha but it seemed that Danzo disposed of our messenger birds and Konoha seemed to turn blind eye to our plea for help. So, we went into hiding, the rest is history. Naruto paused for a while to calm himself down a bit before continued. Members of our clan were very knowledgeable in the art of Fuenjutsu, and were both respected, and feared worldwide because of their prodigious skill. Though noted to be crude in their methods, this however, eventually led to the attack on Uzushiogakure and the rest of the land of whirlpools during the era of shinobi world wars, 
as other nations had begun to see the village as too great a threat to go unchecked. Most of them are hidden in our land as we know thank to the help of Shiomitsu clan and some of our allies, the rest who left even before then were scattered all around the world. With some of them such as Mito and later Kashina having settled in Konoha, along with their ties, structures were built both in and around the village such as the Uzumaki clan's mask storage temple. Throughout most of my mission as per Ka Chan, Turumi clan and your request we manages to locate our long-lost kin namely Karen, Tuyuya, Shirinu Sama etc. My most recent discovered however, led me to meet with them, the strongest group among Uzumaki clan where most survivors belong to, Ten no Gohashira. He contemplated slightly before being motioned to continue as he looked at the curious eyes of the children which urged him to say more. The Senju and Uzumaki clans are distant blood relatives whom they retained strong connections with. For this reason Konoha Nin uniforms have the symbol of Uzushiogakure emblazoned on its shoulders. Hashirama's wife would also come from this clan, further strengthening their ties. The members of the Uzumaki clan possessed an incredibly strong life force which can both endure and survive most grievous injuries plus incredible longevity. The clan members are also blessed with great recuperative powers, able to quickly recover from extreme exhaustion and mend most injuries in short periods of time. As seen with Karen, she can further enhance her healing powers and even temporarily transfer it to another by letting a person bite her and feed others some of her chakra. Their longevity can be seen in part through Mito, who lived from long before the founding of Konoha, to well into the term of the third Hokage's reign. The clan's life force was the reason Kashina survived the extraction of her tailed beast, despite additionally just giving birth only moments before, though she was left severely weakened. Many Uzumaki members possess a strong and special form of chakra, allowing them manifest chakra chains from their body which they can manipulate to their will in battle. Karen Chan, Kashina, Kasumi Chan and myself can use those chains. Chakra chain and fuinjutsu are one of my clan specialties or once were. Were? Everyone present thought aloud except for Yugura and Yutakata. Yes, actually there is more than it seemed. You know what I mean right, Naruto eyes pupil turned darker shade and the whirlpool like stigma appeared it with the same shade color. Uzugan, Yugura said in normalish tone implied that he already knew about it but his slight awe appearance meaning that it was indeed a rare sight. Yes, according to Sawada Sama, 4, one of the very few Uzumaki who posse this magnificent dujutsu. Uzugan is one of the five great dujutsu in the world which composed of Sharingan, Byakugan, Uzugan, Tankyo Kogan which is your Kekai Jenke and Rinnegan respectively. It granted the users the mastery over certain elements, therefore five variation, enhanced fuinjutsu, allowed the creation of various sub-element with full mastery, usage of senjutsu and chakra materialization which is just a part of it. Kashina Uzumaki and my sister Kasumi are able to use chakra chain as a part of our chakra materialization bloodline but it is incomplete. Why it is then Naruto-san? Hotaru asked in soft tone. Chakra materialization or widely known as chakra chain is created with biju suppression in mind so, the other than that it is not quite practical. Our ancestors had found the way to bypass that limit and finally they found a way to do the same thing with other forms. It soon became to requirement that in order for those to become the heir, heiress of the Uzumaki clan, not only that he, she had to be very powerful in their own right in other aspect of shinobi art, they must create their own weapon. Since there was a problem of you know what in the past, Kashina is not able to take the trial and rather take the easy way to become an heiress in her own ways. It is okay considered her current skill and situation but I along with Shiri Nusama will evoke Menma's heir status as soon as we get to Konoha and reveal the close guarded secret. They will have no choice but to obey our demand or we will threaten to release. That, and they will literally die. Can you show it please, the children and Hotaru started to use one of the most effective jutsu against him. The jutsu that can make him one of the most powerful shinobi of Kirigakure gave up. The terrify, puppy eye dog no jutsu. Alright, watch carefully, he stood up and flashed to the garden. He drew out his hand as a pure white katana materialized in front of him. He then summoned a medium sized rock, threw it up high and unsheathed the elegant blade. It all happened in the instant, the rock was split it into half. Chakra weapons are much more powerful than conventionally crafted ones. Uzumaki clan shinobi with mastery over this bloodline will create a weapon with far more physical, metallic appearances with mine. It can be used in conjuncture with our nin, fuin jutsu quite easily. 
We can also forge a weapon of choice in conjuncture with our bloodline which are one of the reasons why the Uzumaki weapons are far more superior than the normal one. The katana then suddenly shattered like a glass, release a series of glittering particles that in turn amzed the young children especially Mamoru who looked at him with a star in his eyes. Naruto looked at the sky before said in very calm tone. I will send my team to participate in the Chunin exam in Konoha this year. It will be fun. I have already informed, Ten no Gohashira, about this development and they already approved about it. He is coming along as an observers along with me. The rest of Shiomitsu clan will be informed tomorrow. Everyone nodded in understanding. Shirino and Azane excused themselves before nudging Yutakata to came along. Yutakata then came along or rather pull along with them out of the room along with the children in order to made some sweets. That leaves only Yagura, Naruto and Hotaru in this room so they decided internally that they will go after them. Before, everyone could do so Yagura calmly asked Naruto who still has his eyes locked on the somewhat cloudy sky. Naruto, you completed, that, jutsu aren't you? Everyone stopped what they were doing and glanced at the person in question as Yagura anticipated for the answer. All he got was a silence but the smile on his face already gave away the answer. Naruto turned toward him, a smile never left his face as he closed his eyes and opened them again. This time, instead of the light blue colored as it used to be. It became slightly darker, the pupil of his eyes glowed sapphire blue like colors with white colored wave stigma, like in Japanese's drawing, appeared in both pupil. Yagura, Shirino and Azane only smiled in return. The Chunin exam this year was going to be very interesting. The children including Hotaru can only awe at the beauty of those eyes, Hotaru especially as she was able to grab much of the information from the stories from one of her, idols, the pair of eyes that symbolize the wave that might bring the fertile soil to the land but it also be the embodiment of chaos that destroyed everything on its path. She wondered, what will happen to the world now? The proud son of the swirling tide will rise once more. I take my earlier words back, some of my OC's Uzumaki will have significant impact on the story. But one thing to be sure, they will never ever actually reconsider the alliance with Konoha due to what Konoha as the whole does to them during their hard times. The one who stood by their side will be supported and those who are not will be left behind without a care. I don't own anything in this story except maybe the plot and Kekai Jenke, they belong to their rightful owners. Sweden. Sweetana, water release, water severing wave. Shintenshin no jutsu, mind switching technique, 1. Personal bloodline. Tankyo Kogan, Heaven's Mirror Lake eye's name came from Lake Tankyo Ko, or Heaven's Mirror Lake, Yugura's advance dojutsu kekai jenke which first thought to be the result from himself being the perfect jinchuriki of a zane, three-tailed turtle, but later revealed to be his bloodline. It is the fourth of the five greatest dojutsu in the world, transcend the Sharingan and Byakugan. It is the equivalence of Mangekyo Sharingan and below that of the eternal Mangekyo Sharingan and Rinnegan respectively although the strength can be varied among the members as the inexperienced Rinnegan users may fall against the expert users of the Tenkyo Kogan. The currently known ability of this Dujutsu is to read others' mind, memory and the individual's resolves as well as awakening them. This ability is similar to Yamanaka clan's Shintenshin no Jutsu, mind switching technique. But with currently unrevealed key differences. With its activation, the pupil of the user's eyes will glow bright sapphire blue like colors with white colored wave like stigma, like in Japanese's drawing, appeared in both pupil. The change in physical attributes of the person will not be visible, but if look closely, there will be a wave like aura leaking from the person's body. It will be very faint, so, not many people can see it. Naruto seemed to acquire this dujutsu for himself, though currently unknown circumstances. The awakening aspect of this dujutsu is the ability to awaken the hidden resolves as such internal awareness in the other's body as well as him, her. It has the potential to grant other people and the users much greater power than even some of the harshest training regiment and the best empowering medicine by awaking the target's hidden potential to the highest limit. It leads to the higher state of consciousness and greater understanding of the world around them, reference to hyper-dying will mode from Kataikyo Yushi Hitman Reborn. The master of this dujutsu has the power that is equal to or even greater than the sage mode. This power although powerful has several weakness. 1. The user must master the user of this dujutsu chakra control at the certain level as well as train their physical body to be fit. 2nd. Certain condition namely calm mind and strong will must be met otherwise the users will not be able to access their true self let alone others. 3rd. 
There is very high risk as the child or even adult could die from the awakening aspect of this technique due to immense stress being put on their brain as with their mind. So far, only Naruto seemed to survive the ritual as a child. It is to be noted that once the users failed the first awakening, their power could be increased by time but he, she will never reach their fullest potential ever again in their lifetime. Basically, it is the one-time action. Reference to Zanpakuto from Bleach. Here you go. The first new Kekai Jenkei of Naruto. More will be revealed with time. 2. Shizukisa means tranquility, calm and serenity in Japanese. 3. Shiomitsu, Chao Manzu, Shiomitsu Tama, Tide Flowing Jewel, Clan. Yugura's clan only a few individuals can activate their legendary Kekai Jenkei Tenkyo Kogen. It was one of the founding clan of Kirigakur and being it's one of the many Nobel clan along with Yuki, Kagaya, before their betrayal. Hazuka, Terumi, and Hoshigaki. Several powerful Kirigakir shinobi are originated from this clan. This clan is well known for powerful water release manipulation in conjuncture with their unique fighting styles with their staff. A powerful member from each generation is the prime candidate for becoming Sanbi Jinchurikis. 4. Kyoka Uzumaki My OC Basically he looked just like Bukuya from Bleach just apparience though. His hair is red like with most Uzumaki. 5. Koten Shiomitsu coincidence like a like Yagura. 6. Sawada Uzumaki Another OC imagine Vongola Primo from Reborn with red hair. 7. Shirinu Uzumaki Another OC will make significant appearance in the later chapters, he is older than he looked. 8. Ten no Gohashira Five Pillar of Heaven in Japanese. I use Google Translation for this so I apologize if it is wrong. This group lead by five most powerful Uzumaki in the generation. All of them possess the Uzugan at the highest level. One person per one element. Go, mean five. The user will have their eyes pupil turn darker shade and the whirlpool like stigma appeared it with the same shade color. Each elements will be reflected on their eyes orangish red as fire, dark blue as water, golden brown as earth, whitish blue as lightning and forest green as for wind. According to Sawada Uzumaki, Uzugan is one of the five great dujutsu in the world which composed of Sharingan, Byakugan, Uzugan, Tenkyokogan and Rinnegan respectively. It granted the users almost perfect mastery over certain elements, therefore five variation, enhanced fuenjutsu, allowed the creation of various sub-element with full mastery, usage of senjutsu and chakra materialization which is just a part of it. The history of the Uzumaki clan is taken from Hunter Nin as the division that directly served the Mizukage but they also served several high-ranking division within Kirigakure namely the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist. Team Genkishi There are ten members lead personally by Naruto. Each of them had white, blue chikuto, with wave theme stigma on the sheath. Normally, they wore standard Anbu Hunter Nin uniform but in the official or highly classified mission they wore a customized uniform. Ambu Captain uniform with white haori with wave like stigma within the orb like figure on the middle of the back, the wrist armor also spotted a hard point and knife holder. All of them are full A rank shinobi. They are specialized in Sweden, Futon, and obviously Ken and Genjutsu. Konoha four days later, the return trip was uneventful, well, except for endless ranting of Sasuke who demanded more training and pestering Kasumi to go on a date with him. Needless to say, she beat him senseless before healing him to beat him over and over again. After some time, he decided to give up hitting on her and just return back to brooding whereas Sakura followed him around like a fangirl that she was. They quietly walked through the village's gate and eventually reached the Hokage's tower. They reached the Hokage's office room as they opened the door and found their Hokage currently working on a mountain high paperworks. It was the Yandaimi, fourth, Hokage of Konohagakure, Minato Namikaze. Minato was a fairly tall, fair-skinned man who on more than one occasion has been compared with Naruto in terms of physical appearance. Both have bright, blue eyes and spiky, blonde hair. Minato also had jaw-length bangs framing either side of his face. His attire consisted of a standard Konoha Nin uniform with two bands each on both of his sleeves, a leaf green flak jacket, blue forehead protector, and blue sandals. After becoming Hokage, he started wearing a short-sleeved long white haori over his normal attire, decorated by orange flames like motifs on the edges, with the kanji for fourth Hokage, si dai mu huo ying, yandaimi Hokage, written vertically down the back, and closed on the front by a thin, orange rope. Sensing their presence, 
he looked up and greet them with a smile especially Kashina and his children as he seemed to start at them a bit longer than other member of the team. Ah Kakashi, Kashina-chan. Welcome back, I take it the mission is success right? He asked cheerily only to frown due to visible downcast look on Kashina and Menma while for Kasumi it was a fake smile. Sasuke gritted his teeth so hard that it was noticeable to most people in the room. Sakura seemed a bit uneasy though, from her, crush, current condition. What is wrong? Is there any complication regarding this mission? Minato asked in somewhat worried tone, he just did not like to see his families look so downcasted like that. Minato sensei. I think Sasuke and Sakura should go home right away. This is sensitive matter concerning the Uzumaki, Namikaze family. Kaskashi answered instead of Kashina who seemed to try very hard and successfully compose herself. What? I am Uchiha elite. I demand that. Sasuke ranted only to be silenced by Kakashi's uncharacteristic glare. If the look could kill then Sasuke would explode it from inside right away. This is the matter not concerning you, Jenin. The council and the civilians are more than half of our shinobis may be kissing your ass right now because of your status. But it doesn't matter for many of us and the rest of the world. Now leave, before I make you, Kakashi said in dangerously low tone. He wasn't a junin for nothing, he was started to get tired of this brat. If only Itachi did not gone rogue then he would made a fine clan heir. What do you say? That was the only word that everyone could made of the Uchiha heir as he was kicked out in the nut by none other than Kasumi to the already opened office door. Courtesy of her cage bunshin, shadow clone jutsu, Sakura quickly left to tend her true love, wound. As she was about to shout at the offender, the door was slammed on her face. This caused her to lose balance and fell down beside Sasuke who only grunted in anger before stormed away quickly from pink hair banshee whom quickly followed his footstep. That take care of him, Kasumi said emotionlessly. Silence plagued the room for a while before Minato decided to stop the awkward atmosphere by addressing the remaining people. Um, could you give me a mission report now? The councils has called a meeting in the next two hours. Kakashi and Kashina then reported to Minato about the mission in Nami no Kuni. How the client lied about the mission rank and the encounter with a rank missing Nin Manjetsu Hazuka and Zabuza Momochi. That made him a bit mad at Tazuna but quickly calmed down as Kashina was there too and she was S-rank shinobi. As he was about to dismiss them there was something in his mind. So, he asked most of them to wait but the children were already left, leaving only the adults in the room. He was already anxious about what they could possibly hide from him. However, the said information would shock him. Kakashi, there is something you are not telling me, what is it? Um, sensei, it was complicated. Kakashi rubbed the back of his head in quite suspicious manner. It seemed like he did not eager to tell him. Kakashi, tell me now. This is not a time to joke. Minato dropped his smile as he glared at his last surviving student. This made the latter felt a bit uncomfortable. Our son. Kashina replied in depressed tone. What do you mean? Kashina Chan, YIT, what? We met Naruto Chan during the mission. What? That is good news. How is he? Is he hurt? He quickly rose up from his seat and put both of his palms on his desk. So many questions came up from Minato's mouth, however. After a few minutes of complete silence, Kakashi decided to fill in for her. It is complicated, Sensei. You may want to sit down. It will be a very long tales. You might need to put a silence seal. Kakshi said in unnaturally serious tone. Minato then made up, Hokage, mode as Kashina put up a silence seal. He sat down as he motioned Kashina to do so on the near chair, now talk. Well let's start from, he then told Minato what he know about Naruto, how Naruto was with Kirigakure all along, about his seeming high status in the village and unknown connection with Yandaimi Mizuka Jigura and seven ninja swordsmen of the mist. That is sum it up version of what we know sensei. There are lots of things we don't know yet. Kakashi reported professionally. Minato gritted his teeth so hard that it made a sound. Why is he in Kiri? He belongs to Konoha, where his family lives. Mama, Sensei. Please calm down will you? How can I suppose to calm down? Kakashi. My son is out there. In the village full of barbaric people for Kami's sake. If it is up to me then I will slaughter them myself. He nearly shouted although he realized this and calmed himself down albeit barely with his wife's worried grace. Sensei. Kakashi said in somewhat blank tone. You were being irrational. You were the Hokage now. Minato frowned at the implication, 
after all you choose it yourself aren't you. So, if I have to say anything. Deal with it. Monado genuinely surprised at his student's seriousness. Beside, this got Monado's slight attention. Even though he still hated your family in the village quite a lot, Monado frowned slightly, but he still cares for his precious people. Chibi Kakashi pump up. Especially his dearest sister Kasumi, Kakashi made an eye smile, to me he seemed quite happier than when he was here. So, personally I thought it would be best to stay this way. After all, we don't want to ruin our relation with Mizu no Kuni if it could be called as such. He paused to let the words sank to them. After a while he remembered something so, he revealed it. Also, this got Minato's full attention, it seemed that he will enter this year Chunin exam in Konoha. Now, if you are thinking about making him stay here forever. Face it, it is bound to fail. Kashina mumbled something without anyone notice, if you don't mind. I will accompany you to the council meeting as well. Knowing them, we can't just let them off the hook as the troubles are bound to happen if we did so. See you in two hours. I will grab some snacks before going myself. Ya nay, he disappeared in smoke from Shunshin no Jutsu, body flicker technique, leaving the couple in the room alone deep in thought. Two hours later, the council meeting surprisingly Kakashi was only five minutes late for the meeting where he should be three hours or more unless it was truly important matter. This caused instant reaction from the council as the shinobi side comically tried to flash out of the non-existing genjutsu. After the whole fuss came to pass, they began to sat down and discussed about the village-related affairs, international disputes etc. Once a while, a civilian side attempted to arrange a marriage contracts to either Kasumi or Menma but were shot down the moment they were brought up. Today was bound to be an interesting day as Mebuki Haruno the renowned major supporter of Uchiha or to be more specific Sasuke suddenly brought up certain subject. Her loud mouth usually made a bad impression which also relate to the rather troublesome topics she chose to brought up in most of the discussion. It was no secret that she was a major fangirl of Minato and harbored a great deal of hatred toward the Uzumaki clan head, her daughter for some reasons and that also somehow extended to the eldest as well. Hokage-sama, we have a very important matter to discuss with you, she said in a tone that was too sweet for most to hear. What is it? Minato said to bored tone she smirked, that Uchiha-sama had activated his Sharingan in his first sea turn a rank mission. Minato and Kashina as well as Makoto signed as they wondered how she knew this fast, this proved that he was worthy for your princess, hand in marriage, she said the word, princess, in quite venomous tone. And also, this got a raised of eyebrow from everyone as Danzo voiced his word. Everyone, on Shinobi 1, were on alert, waiting for an inevitable. I heard that he encountered your eldest son in the mission and he has worn Kirigakure headband, forehead protector. Kashina, Minato and Kakshi can only curse Danzo and his resourcefulness. Now everyone knew what they were trying to hide. The reactions of the councils especially the civilian side though was instant. We demand him to be brought back to Konoha, it is his rightful home. He belongs to Konoha. The lists went on and on until some of the members could not stand any more so, they decided to act. No. We will do no such a thing, a shouted silence which came from Kakashi and surprisingly Shikaku. What do you mean no Kakashi, Shikaku? Homura narrowed his eyes at Shikaku and later Kakashi as the clan heads did so as well. It was out of characters for Kakashi and Shikaku to loudly voice their opinions. Even though they were lazy but they were far from being a fool, they were among the highly intellect members from their respective positions. Troublesome. Actually we can't. From the mission, he is far more powerful than anyone else of his age group. I dare say that he surpassed even me and Itachi at his age. Kaharu voiced her own opinions at the dispute, a couple of Anbu squad will do. No, it will be counterproductive. Even the Hunter Nin squad leader treated him with respect. He also seemed to be on a good term with Zabuza Momichi and Manjetsu Hazuka, both are the members of seven ninja swordsmen of the mist. Both are powerful in their own right, being a border S rank shinobi. They are also quite prideful in their ability just like their fellow renowned swordsmen. Both of them, were, elite Anbu before they left Kirigakure and you know them better than that isn't it, ho no ra ble council members, they raised their eyebrow at the jab. The fact that he was able to talk to them so casually without fear of being lashed back for being disrespectful can only meant that he was either one of their members or being as powerful as or even stronger than either of them. If he is one of them then we have every right to be cautious because we don't know which swords he has in his possession. 
Only thing we know for sure what he can do is the information from the encounter during Nami no Kuni mission which is not really much at all, Shikaku answered in a bored yet professional tone. It seemed that he did his homework very well. That shut them up. They knew that individually, Manjetsu and Zabuza were powerful. Not fully S rank material of course but very high a rank. Hiyashi thought grimly as he remembered the report that two main branch members of his clan along with couple of Anbu, five to be exact, along with three Uchiha ganged up on Zabuza during the skirmish in the Third Great Shinobi World War. All but one main branch members with major injury returned alive and from his report it is said that Zabuza did not have any major injury on him. Manjetsu was no pushover either, he was considered as a genius among his generation of the villages. Minato remembered as he read the report of his victory over five Uchiha clan members along with couple of Inazuka and Yamanaka clan members during a brief skirmish in Kiri border. He obtained his title, Second Coming of Demon of the Hidden Mist by then by defeating them all in less than ten minutes with only minor scratch. The second time he officially reappeared was to attack the scouting squads of Konoha Anbu with unidentified mission in Kirigakure, in which Minato yet to know the real objective. He defeated and killed every single of them, with were around dozens, with ease. Both scenarios happened before they became one of the swordsmen in their respective period. They were cautious now, if he was actually the person that Kakashi confirmed to be, it will be extremely difficult to brought him back. It is safe to assume that he was at least a border S rank shinobi. Shikaku was on the different world from others. Despite his apparent laziness, he was the only one in Konoha who actually contemplates Kakashi's mission report. Well besides someone we know so well. Danzo coughed at the same time. Contrast to most belief, he stayed late at night yesterday much at the shock of his wife and clansmen as he researched the updated information that the village currently has in possession. Even classified information. He went to sleep at 2 after he received enough information but even then he was deep in thought all the time when he lied down. Wait a minute. Kakashi is Naruto Namikaze's physical description true? Hi. What is it? Shikaku Sama. He thought a bit before took out his customized bingo book. He handed it to Boar Mask Anbu, turned to page 220, read it aloud. He also motioned several Anbu to come forward and gave the copies of the book to them before ordered them to give it to everyone in the room. A few minutes passed by as the Boar Anbu waited until everyone received the copies before being motioned to read as he did so. Characters Biography, in Bingo Book, Name, Calming Tide of Kiri Shizukisa Yushio no Kiri, now named Naruto Uzumaki Turumi. Stats. S Rank Affiliation. Kirigakure Rank. Unknown. Assumed to be either Elite Junin Rank or Anbu Captain as he seemed to command his own squad of Anbu in one of the missions cited. Kekai Jenke. Chakra Materialization. His overall proficiency of Chakra Chain is unknown but is cited to be able to suppress version 2 Gobi Jinchurikis by mere touch the Chakra Chain is somewhat shiny green in color and looked somewhat like a tentacle with pointy peacock feature like tips with flower grown along the tentacle. Imagine Yumachika True Shinkai from Bleach. Ninjutsu. Unknown Taijutsu. Unknown assumed to be very high, able to stop the rampaging Gobi Jinchurikis in Chakra Cloak version 2 with a bare hand and even push him back. Genjutsu. Unknown intelligence. Very high speed. His movement looked like a blur to most eyes. Most opponents fell before even have time to react as observed when he disabled a dozen of Chunin rank missing Nin from various origins which terrorize Yugakure, land of hot spring, within a few seconds without any usage of visible weapons or jutsu. Stamina. Unknown hand seals. Unknown. A few jutsu that he used were performed without hand seals. Weapon. Bamboo jug filled with a soap solution, pure white sheathed katana and a pipe slight blossoming yellow flower in place where the bubble is released. Note to be very profined in the use of bubble blower. Special ability. Very high affinity for water release, one of the two known users of soap bubble ninjutsus, ability in fuinjutsu largely unidentified but rumored to defeat rogue Gobi Jinchuriki with unknown fuinjutsu in collaboration with his unique chakra chain. Background. Adopted by the current Godem Mizukage Mei Terumi and trained personally by Yandaimi Mizukage Yagura. He is arguably one of the most powerful shinobi ever produced from Kirigakure. He was also an apprentice of Yagura at the age of 10 now the right-hand man of Godem Mizukage Mei Terumi as Yagura steps down at the conclusion of the civil war. Bounty. 80 million Ryo stationed by Otogakure 30 million Ryo stationed by Sanagakure. 
After waiting for a few moments for the council to took in, he closed the book before return it to Shikaku as he disappeared into the background. I. Impossible, one of the civilian counselors exclaimed. Damn, he becomes quite a player in the shinobi world now isn't it Inoichi? Choza said to his friends who nodded in return. You are clearly exceeding my expectation once again. Well done Naruto-kun, I am very proud of you, Hiruzen, Makoto thought with pride. I must have him in my clan, Root, Hiyashi, Danzo think. Wait a minute, this bingo book looks a bit different from the version we used, how come you have it? Homura exclaimed. Shikaku laid his head down and said in a somewhat sleepy tone, this is the update version of my own. I created based on my own research along with databank we collected on the world that we know. The main reason why I give this to all of you is to make you more aware of our surrounding. From now on, use this version as the main reference as I notice that the one we currently have is heavily outdated, getting a collective nod of most of the councils, he actually put his head down in a sleepy manner. Wake me up when there is something interesting, he actually fell asleep, ignoring a sweat dropped on the shinobi council's face. Troublesome, we screw up. He is technically Kiri's representative in the shinobi world, with a powerful shinobi like that they will never give him up. For him to denounce Namikaze name, this can only meant that he cut all tie with Yandaimi's family but to think that it is Mizukage who took him in, Shikaku thought analytically, man, Minato is going to chew me out for this but I am really run out of idea. I have a couple of dozen plan out already but based on new information I received a few hour prior this meeting there are too many uncertainty. Not to mention the rumors, sign. Why do I come here in the first place, I should have skipped this meeting and take a nice long nap or watch a cloud somewhere to properly plan things out but again my wife is going to kill me, he shivered at the thought of his beautiful but deadly wife with that blasted frying pan. We must bring him back, they must pay to kidnap him. We must march our force over there. We can't let them have him any longer, soon. The wide discussion erupted throughout the council room as they discussed among themselves. Silence. Minato shouted as he began to fed up with the ranting. This effectively shut them up, as the silence ensure he spoke again. Even though Kirigakure is severely weakened from their civil war but don't forget they still have most of the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist up and running. Not to mention if we go to war with them then Kumogakure will no doubt step in to get back at us. Also, we have Iwagakure to be our primary concern as they are still quite bitter from the last war. If the war occurred, then Kirigakure will surely send Naruto to combat us as one of their S rank nin. There is very high possibility that we might end up killed him in the battle rather than retrieve him peacefully. Not to mention the possibility of him being one of the swordsmen, he will have the entire group along with the hunter Nin backing him up. Do you get the idea? Shikaku said in uncharacteristically serious tone. This caused them to actually take in his word very carefully. We must invite Mizukage over here to talk about this, Kaharu suggested, getting a nod of approval from everyone. That can be done during the finale. This meeting is adjourned. Everyone may leave, everyone did so, leaving only Kashina and Minato in the room. They stood by each other as they both signed heavily. Honey, Kashina asked in worried tone, she hate to saw her husband depressed like this. Although deeply, she also felt the same way but just too proud to admit it. I am happy that Naruto will be here but, he paused, how could we face him? After all these year of horrible thing we have done. We will find a way. Now, let make sure that our remaining children become strong enough to be like him. Kashina comforting him by rubbing his shoulder but deep down she felt even worse. She deeply regretted not being there for her son who now already grown up. Alright, Kirigakure four month later, two weeks before Chunin exam. In front of the village gate of Kirigakure, there were whole lots of shinobis and villagers gathering around. All of them were here for one purpose, to escort their village team which in turn the representative of their villages. They were of course, excited about this whole event. Way to go, Zabuza san Manjetsu, show those idiot our power. Yutakata sama several girls squealed in delight as Yutakata apparently turned and, wave, at them, from their perspective at least. Naruto-sama will never lost to anyone, my my isn't it too much for an escort, Manjetsu questioned. But despite that, he smiled himself at the attention they received. Yutakata calmly replied, I don't know. They seem to have very high hope for us. Then let not disappoint them. We will show the world our power, one of the Junin said while pumping his fist up, result in a cheer from the villagers and some genin. 
Naruto glanced toward the highest building in the village which was the, the Mizukage's building. He smiled gently at his surrogate mother as she did the same. Let us go my fellow Kiri comrades, to Konoha, Naruto said gently. He received a collective shout of, hi, before start moving with everyone else followed him. The cheer continued even after they were out of sight if you looked from the gate that is. Where is team 12? They seem to be more eager than any of us to come to Konoha. Manjetsu questioned along the way. Naruto laughed heartily as he starred at the cloud, knowing him, he should be closer than any of us. Ha! Were the collective thought of majority of Genin and Junin with the exception of Naruto, Zabuza and Utakata. Somewhere in Hai no Kuni, land of fire, the figure entered the viewing revealed to be a young man, boy around 15 to 17 years old. He had purple eyes and spiky red hair, look Shirainu Uzumaki in my profile there is a link. Rather than wearing a standard Kirigakir uniform, he wore white shirt with only two buttons being put on thus show off his pale skin underneath and navy blue coat without hood. He also wore black pant. Overall, he didn't seem like a shinobi but a normal young man as he also did not wear any visible Kirigakir forehead protector, headband. If there were no young children behind him wearing a Kiri forehead protector, headband, then it would make no sense at all for a civilian to accompanying them. Around them was dozens of dead Konoha Anbu although the cloak signified that they were from root division. Uzumaki-sama, it is time, one of the genin called out to the man in front of them. He merely shrugged his shoulder as the sign of acceptance before start moving. The three quickly followed behind. Junin meeting, same time, for the upcoming Chunin exam, notably Kiri will send a total of 15 team, 18 from Iwa and another 19 team from Kumo. This is another chance to prove to the collective clients over the continent and daimyos that despite the Kiyubi's attack and the other, two, events we are still the strongest village in the elemental nations, he paused as he got most of the Junin's present undivided attention. Those of you who wanted to admit your team into the exam please a steps forward and start talking, Minato said in normal tone. This was an important matter after all. Almost the same as anime except Menma replaced Naruto and Kasumi's name is added to team 7 list. I am too lazy to describe. Hum, was the only word that came out of Minato's mouth but in his mind he was in conflict. Although he was confident that his children were powerful but he could not help but wonder if that would be enough. After all, his missing son said he would enter this exam with a team. If the report was true then his team would be undoubtedly very powerful. Kashina was also deep in thought of the same line as her husband but she hid it very well in front of others. Iruka could not believe at the Junin's decision. All those team members used to be his students so, he knew about their limits. He knew because he already experienced it firsthand and that is enough. To send children especially those with little experience to the battlefield now known as Chunin exam was nothing short of suicide. He had no doubt that other villages will send their elite teams including those who were much more experienced in the field than those from Konoha will ever be. He remembered that out of his generation, only twelves including himself made it to the preliminary round and only two were made Chunin. He had to try for three years in order to be one so, he couldn't help but worried about them very similar conflict as in canon except with more people in the room. Minato decided that now was the time to break some news to them. I heard from Kakashi that my son Naruto will participate in the exam as well. Although not confirm, he might be a Junin rank. We must bring him back, we must convince him somehow. I doubt that it will work. This went on and on and on. Eventually the whole room was filled with discussion between people within. Minato raised his chakra level slightly, preventing them from arguing any further. You must not approach him directly as it will antagonize him as well as our fragile relationship with Kirigakure. Is anyone clear? Minato asked calmly. As everyone nodded at his word, he popped out a smile. Meeting adjourn. I expect great result from all of you. Meanwhile somewhere deep down within Konohagakure territory. Konohagakure, as it namesake the village hidden in the leaf had more in itself than most would expect it. Just like tree, most will see only the wood or the green leaves visible to our sight. Yet, there was more. Most trees always presented with root albeit most either could not saw or ignore it completely, it was there. As always since the very beginning and will always exist, as long as there was light, as will the darkness. While Minato Namikaze technically held most of the public power in Konoha, the visible sight at least. There was also another faction who's thrived in the darkness, of Konoha. The leader of the faction who's the world knew him as, Yami no Shinobi, 
Danzo Shimura, the renowned leader of Root as far as Shinobi world was concerned. Of course, most people would familiar with an animal mask shinobis with specialized gears and uniforms whose duties were to maintain peace and security of the village. But these were different, here although they wore different types of animal masks which distinguished them from each other. But unlike regular Anbu, they wore black cloak with hood and rather than wore a standard Anbu uniform they wore different types of shirt, pants etc. This meant that they were not standard Anbu operatives. They were in fact the organization known only as Root. They were an officially disbanded branch of Konohagakur's Anbu training subdivision founded by Danzo Shimura. However, in reality they were fully operational and kept doing what their leader thought was best for Konoha in less than savory mean. The complex was quite large, a single meeting room where the light from outside could enter from above via concealed window was much bigger than council meeting room. Okay if you don't get it then imagine the meeting place of Root in anime where Danzo gives his speech to his private forces. The group of masked men and women with their respective cloak on were now kneeling in front of the figure that stood in front, facing them. The figure appeared as a frail, old man with a cane. He had black, shaggy hair, and his right eye was bandaged. He also had an X-shaped scar on his chin. He wore a white shirt, with a black or dark gray robe over the top of it covering from his feet, to just over his right shoulder. The robe conceals his right arm which was bandaged. He glanced at the forces in front of him with almost no visible emotion but if to look closely he was serious. I heard that Naruto Uzumaki the fabled calming tide of Kiri, asterisk Shizuki Sayushio no Kiri, will be presented in the exam. For squad 1 to 3, your job is to observe Kirigakure team especially him and his team. If possible then tried to capture the genin but tried not to make a fuss. The rest may scatter to perform the assigned the mission or observing the Chunin hopeful from other villages especially Kumo and Iwa including Kiyubi Jinchurikis and the Uchiha heir. Danzo Sama. What about Naruto Uzumaki? What should we do with him? One of the root members asked him. He had auburn hair wrapped in a ponytail. Signify that he was a Yamanaka. Leave him be. He was far more powerful than any of you. It will make international incident with Kiri if you mess it up. A war that I had to admit that we cannot win without major damage. He glanced at one of the root member whom had long feminine hair but within his mask there was a white eyes. A Hyuga. Shinra. What is the mission status? Is the target neutralized? The root Hyuga shook his head slightly, no sir, he killed ten of our operatives quite easily. He sends only myself alive to give you a message, he respond in monotone. Go on, just as no one can stop the flow of time, no one can prevent the inevitable. The sun of the swirling tide will rise again. To prepare for day when the forgotten divinity will return to the world. Now of all time. What are you really after? Shirinu Uzumaki, Danzo thought with a slight shiver as he imagined the shadowy image of the evilly smirking young looking man, boy. Depend on point of view, stared at him and laughed evilly, thinking of Rao La Cruce's evil laugh. The Chunin exam this year will no doubt be very damaging. He would make sure that Konoha remain at the top as it should be, started by taking the Hokage position from that damn Namikaze. He was not really yet but will be with time. Despite all this facade of emotionless and serious person that he portrayed himself to be, he was in fact very nervous about this development. Something was bound to happen and deep down he hoped that he would not be exposed soon. He had a job to do. After all it was for the good Konoha. Although he began to worried about whether his and fellow accomplices decision regarding the Uzumaki clan was right or not. Uzumaki were known to be very stubborn and friendly but if you messed with them, your destruction were almost guarantee. Now he knew that there were couple of Uzumaki out there and they were obviously set their eyes of Konoha or to be more specific them. He will be more careful, he thought. He came too far to back down now. Soon, the elemental nations will fall and Konoha will rule. With him as the first ever emperor. The very thought made him smirk, unaware of the lizard that hidden in the shadow with a swirl in its eyes. It made an escape without anyone knowing, to report back to its master of the recent development. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.